Welcome everyone to the Woodbridge Channel's coverage of high school sports. Tonight we're at a newly renovated Woodbridge High School field for a matchup between the South Plainfield Tigers and our own Woodbridge Barons. I'm Craig Coughlin. I'll be bringing the game with my colleague, our mayor, John McCormick. And John, it's a new field. It's got a great feel to it tonight. Oh man, it's electric. This atmosphere, it's great. The first game with the new stands uh, took a while, but we're at least going to get a couple games in this year, which is just fantastic. Friday Night Lights, nothing better. Really is. You know, it, it uh, it's imposing. That was the word that came to my mind when I looked down here on, on the field and it looked up, it's higher, it's bigger. Uh, I talked to uh, the athletic director, Joe Ward, before the game. He said that he heard the South Plainfield kids going, looks like a, like a like we're in Texas. And here come the Barons, by the way. Well, they told me I'm going to have to stop halfway up and take a break before I get to the top. So uh, let's talk about the matchup tonight. The Barons coming off that loss to Colonia, which always hurts, of course, when you lose to an inter intra-town uh, high school. But they, they're having a fine season, aren't they? Well, you know, they lost to Colonia. They had a three-game winning streak going in. They only lost to Bishop Barr by a couple extra points. They lost to Carteret by a touchdown. And the Colonia scores 49-27, but very, very deceiving. They were up 14-0. They had the ball going for 21-0. Unfortunately, a pass, lateral pass, uh, fumble uh, late, late in the game. There was only eight points difference, and another fumble led to a Colonia recovery. The game was a lot closer than the final score indicated. Woodbridge played very, very well. They did, and they showed a real ability to move the ball, right? They could run the ball. They ran. Uh, they threw the ball pretty well, and they had a great punt return and a kickoff return to start the game. Tracy Fudge is among the county leaders in passing. Uh, Zanier Shield is a, a very, very good running back. Kasim Glover receiving. Uh, they've got Henry, who's a multi-purpose threat, you know, returning the ball. Uh, they got a lot of weapons. Lanier running the ball. They've got a lot of weapons here. Zaya Robinson catching the ball, so they got a lot going on offensively. Right, and they're a pretty young team. Fudge just a junior. They have some uh, seniors sprinkled in, but we're going to be back for the start of the game in just a few minutes, so stay with us, everybody. Yeah, don't worry about us, guys. <laughs> we'll be back. We'll see you. marching band. Our first senior, Ryan Alcott, escorted by his parents, Maureen, Gary, and Jack, his sister, Melissa, class of 2000, his brother, John, class of 2011, his brother, Shane, his brother-in-law, Steve, and his nephew, Tyler. Freddie Aaron Boles, escorted by his mother, Avlis, and his father, Manuel. Donovan Brown, escorted by his mother, Denise, and his father, Don. Delison Bueno, escorted by his mother, Magdalis, his father, Delio, and his brother, Derek. Victor Calazzo, escorted by his father, Frank, and his mother, Amelia. Elon Capers, escorted by his mother, Jeanette, his father, Keith Sr., his brother, Keith Beefy, class of 2012, and his brother, Cameron, class of 2014. Eddie Concitis, escorted by his grandparents, Ed and Mary, 
his sister Jennifer, his brother-in-law Scott, his nephew Landon, his uncles Bob and Keith Concitus, his cousin Robert Concitus, Nick Figueroa, escorted by his mom Yvette, his dad Carol's, his grandparents Mario and Mary, his stepmom Lisa, his brother Chris, his sisters Charlie and Vanessa, and his uncle Mario, class of 1999. Taufik Fassion, escorted by his mother, Katria, and his father, Saladin. Alex Flores, escorted by his mother, Barbara, his father, Wilson, his sister, Priscilla, and his grandmother, Martha. John Kuzia, escorted by his mom, Relisa, his dad, John, his brothers, JB, Daniel, and Dennis. Connor Taylor will be with Coach Nyers. The birthday boy, Val Keller, escorted by his father, Barry, and his mother, Peg. Percy Martin Aguique, escorted by his mom, Ngozi, his brother, Pleasant, and his sister, Precious. Yamani Manzini, escorted by his brothers, Sandil and Kyrie. Youssef Mossad, escorted by his father Ali, his brothers Adam and Yeye. -Ye. Nat Apoku, escorted by his mother Georgina, Pip, Quasi, and Dylan. Ronnie O2, escorted by his mom, Jemima, sister, Shannons and Rachel, and his brothers, Emmanuel and Ricky. Zaire Robinson, escorted by his mother, Sakanya, his father, Anthony, his sisters, Asaya and Ananen, his grandparents, Brenda and Rashid. Zanir Schuler, escorted by his father, Ronald, his cousins, Kanil and Amani. Tyler Smith, Escorted by his mother, Bonnie, his grandmother, Barbara, his aunt, Bibby, and cousin, Tammy. Connor Taylor. 
escorted by Coach Nyers. And his brother, Austin. Anthony Tavares, escorted by his mother, Yadira, and his father, Antonio. Thomas Urbanski, escorted by his mother, Christine, and his sister, Nicolette. And Anthony Woods, escorted by his father, Bill, and his mother, Jamie. Ladies and gentlemen, that is your class of 2000 football, 15 football players. Our first cheerleader, Allison Andhuha, escorted by her mother, Judy, and her father, Edward. Jennifer Carvalho, escorted by her mother, Lisa, her father, Bob, and her brother, Mike. Rebecca Quoto, escorted by her mother, Sonia, her father, Joe, and her sister, Summer, class of 2013. Alexis Crow, escorted by her mother, Ethel, and her sister, Mackenzie. Andrea Piaggio, escorted by her mother, Beatrice, her dad, Andres, and her sister, Karina. Veronica Stanker, escorted by her father, Francis, her sister, Lexi, class of 2012, her aunt, Barbara, and her cousin, Taylor. Heather Zoak, escorted by her mother, Jackie, her father, Tom, and her sister, Sarah, class of 2013. Lori Urbanski, escorted by her mother Patty, her father Rich, her brother John, and Katie Urbanski is here in spirit this evening. Monica Young, escorted by her mother Karen, her father Jason, and her sister Kylie. And Tiana Zaremba, escorted by her mother Wendy, her father Daniel, and her boyfriend John Kelly. our group for the class of 2015 Yorkshire High School Cheerleaders.
for a senior, Katherine Abner. Escorted by her parents, Judith and Chris. Her sister, Teresa, who is also in the marching band, and Maria. Her boyfriend, Spencer Dubay. And her uncle, Bobby, visiting from St. Cloud, Minnesota. Amy Balint. Escorted by her mother, Patty, and her aunt, Patty Malloy. <laughs> Diane Balint. Escorted by her parents, Lawrence and Dave, her sister, Danielle, and her grandparents, Nanny, Pop Pop, and me. Nelson Carroll, escorted by his parents, Amy and Dale, and his brother, Michael. Gabriel Castillo, escorted by his brother, Gene, class of 2013. Brittany Crawford, escorted by her mother Michelle, her father William, and her boyfriend Richard Meyer. Yashim Akisi, escorted by her mother Rose, class of 1994, her grandparents, her aunts, Naren, class of 1992, and Selda, class of 1995, her uncles, Rob and Kaya, her brother, John, and her best friend, Matthew. Julian and Cabo. Escorted by his mother, Estrelita, his uncle, Caesar, his aunt, Corazon, and his cousin, Jessica. Blair Gomes. Escorted by her parents, Michelle and Eric, her grandmother, Joanne, and her brother, Bryce, 2013. Mike Carafa, escorted by his parents, Mary and Mike, and his girlfriend, Danielle. <laughs> Alyssa Kenny, escorted by her parents, Darlene and Charles, her sister, Jessica, who's also in the marching band, her aunt Katie, and her boyfriend Isaiah. Mark Martinez, escorted by his parents, Elizabeth and Marco, his sisters, Evelyn and Cindy, and his friends, Matt and Andres. Emily Warakomsky, escorted by her parents, Lucy and Chester, her cousin, Carissa, and R.C. Libby Wu, 
escorted by her parents, Lisa and Jason, her brother, Leon, her friends, Naziba, Amira, Shreshta, Rachna, Amira, and Isaac. And finally, Brandon Zamora. Escorted by his parents, Beatrice and Wellington, his brother, Andrew, class of 2010, and his sister, Kelly, class of 2013. Now one final applause for the class of 2015, our marching marriage. And welcome ladies and gentlemen, John McCormick, Craig Coughlin from our new perch here at uh, Woodbridge High School. John, what do you think of our new quarters? Here? I love it, I love it. It's beautiful, it's warm. <laughs> it is. Just a little, the, the uh, poll we were just talking with, uh, Getting in our way a little bit. Let's do quickly the return team for Woodbridge. Number 50, Dellison Bueno. Number 51, Edward Consitis. 52, Nick Figueroa. 57, Scott Schroth. 23, Keyshawn Henry. Here comes the it's kick. It's an onside kick to start the game. Yeah, we got and it. We got it. ready for it. 51, just said his name, Eddie Consitis. Nice play. Wow, good field position. So, yeah, South Plainfield won the toss. They elected to defer, and so the Barons get it first, and they try a little chicanery here to start the game. Plus, plus some trickery, too. <laughs> Tyler Bork, number 17, on that return team. Also, we had Darren Tabon, number 81. Ryan Alcott, number 8. Number 80 was Christian Figueroa. Number 12 was Isaiah Exposito. Number 17 was, I said, Tyler Bork. And I think that completes it. They say 66, Dylan Leone. Yeah, we're good. Here we go, Craig. Here we go. Tracy Fudge is the quarterback. He'll start under center. In the backfield, there's a little, well, little razzle-dazzle for the Barons. He's got 30 wide open. Wide, wide open. open down the field. Oh, he just got back 30. to it and picked it off. Lanier, and it's going to be intercepted and go right back to the Tigers. Oh, man, he was so open. That was Kishon Henry, Scooby, as he likes to be called. He threw that a little interception. bit sooner. A little bit sooner. He had 30. I mean, I'm telling you, there was nobody near him. We probably won't have that on the tape. Pass was intended for Nathan Lanier, so we have our first turnover of the game. Defensively for Woodbridge, number 20 is Natapoku. Number 11 is Kasim Glover. He's in the secondary. Number 6 is Tyler Smith, if that's a 6. Apologize if it's not. Number two is Percy Martin. He had a good game last time we saw him against he did. Money. Yes, he did. Number eight, Ryan Alcott also had a good game, called his name a lot. Number 54, Bernardo Sanchez. And I can't see the rest of the guys, but here we go. South Plainfield breaks the huddle. They'll operate out of the shotgun. Their quarterback is Patrick Waldrop, number 10. New quarterback, just played one game last yeah. week. Here comes Looking Alcott. Going to throw it first down the field. A little mix up there. The pass was intended for Kyle Dickerson. He oh, was man, I don't like this pole. Yeah, no, it's a bit. Well, I'm it's gonna only going to be here for another 40 or 50 years. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to move over a bit. This is better over here. Yeah. Sorry about that. I interrupted you. But what we're complaining about, it's beautiful here inside the new uh, the press box. They just redone, of course, the stands, and the project got complete. Uh, but there, there almost are windows. Complete. Almost, almost complete. complete. The locker rooms, just need locker rooms are still up in the air. So are the bathrooms. We have porta potties. There's Chris Kamari, I'm uh, Chris uh, Costi. Hand off behind the line, but then he still gets a lot of yards. And still rolling and rumbling. That's Jason Lee. There's the guys from Mass Construction, all the guys that worked on this project. They're all here. We don't like the poles, boys. You got to get rid of the poles. Get, get, get a wide open. Yeah. Gain of about 15 on the play. Oh, there's the stadium on camera. Yeah, we see us up, uh, up top there. And you, from down on the field, it, it's really a lot higher than it was yeah. before. It's bigger. Oh, yeah. And as I said. Good thing I started working out. It would have made it up. <laughs> so lots of action here as we get started. First down and 10 for the Tigers at their own 45. And Two receivers white, right, one left. 
Takes the snap, fakes the handoff inside, throws it outside, bobbled but complete to Dickerson. He breaks a tackle and slip straight arms to Opoku. And then Short of the first, he'll have to third and probably one or two. Uh, That'll bring second and one. Oh, so third. Uh, second, every, not third, my bad. It's okay. Every, quarter, every offensive coach's dream, right? Second, second and, and one. one. Well, let's see if they take a shot. Barons, as we, we said at the top, coming off a tough loss against, against Colonia. They played very well, had a 14 0 lead and a 21 7 lead. They looked like they were in store for more, and they turned the ball over. And then a couple of critical Colonia. turnovers, kind of like there. I mean, you you got to you got to hold on to the ball. Here's off. a sweep right. That was a nice tackle there by Opoku, but so number thirty, number twenty. That's not Nate Gonzalez. Lanier. Gonzalez, Bernard Gonzalez. I thought that was Nate Lanier. Lanier. Well, Lanier's on our team. He, Lanier's on. Uh, no, Lanier is our guy, 30. Yeah, right. Number 59, we didn't mention him. Alex Lagrippo on defense. Number 14 is Alex Flores. He had a good game against Colonia. <clears throat> and if um, we should make our disclaimer, John, if you get a copy of this tape and you're from South Plainfield, we're sure your kids are wonderful. They're terrific. We wish them every success. But as you notice, we call, they call them, we call them our guys and their yeah. guys. <laughs> My wife's from South Plainfield. My father-in-law still lives there. There's a pitch Love to the Gonzalez town. We again. Wanna, we want to beat you. Cuts it back inside. Nice move to pick up an extra five yards. He'll get down to about the 35-yard line. So a nice drive here for the South Plainfield Tigers. Yeah, it's a nice town. We're giving up way too many yards per, per possession here. This is, uh, you know, game nine, then they gain six. Here we see the huddle. So Plainfield comes in at two and four, Woodbridge three and three. But as we said, Woodbridge could easily be five and one. A couple breaks that could be six and zero. Oh. Your lights are on. Please move your truck. Sliegenthaler goes in motion. The pitch comes to Gonzalez. He's going to go around the left side this time and driven out of bounds there by a host of Barons. Barons in their home black. Up a tad short of the first. South Plainfield in their road white, trimmed in green. All three Woodbridge Township teams are favored today in the News Tribune. Brings Kennedy over Perth Damboy, Colony over St. Joe's, and Woodbridge over South Plainfield. Field, yeah. When's the last time that happened? Mm -hmm. Now I can switch my seat over it. Get a better angle. Let's get a keep moving I, to yeah, the angles. As long as I just Here we see have the, two seats to sit on, I'm the good. Woodbridge sideline. Third and very short. We got a big audience right here in the booth, John. So. Well, all the guys that built this place came to watch it and see it being done in, in action, you know? <clears throat> they did a good job. Third oh, and sneak. short, Waltrip got it. keeps it himself, and he'll pick up the first Third down. Sneak gain of about two on the play. First and 10 to 30. First and 10 to the 30. Oh, it'll be first and 10 at the 30. It'll be first and 10 for the Tigers on the Barons' 30-yard line. Senior night here at Woodbridge. All the football players, cheerleaders, band members. All introduced before the game with their parents, siblings. Waldrop checks around. Gonzalez, the lone setback. He'll hand it to Gonzalez. There we He's go. met there, right? Finally, Knocked a stop. down by Alex Flores and Ryan Alcott. Tackle in the backfield by Alcott and Flores. So, no gain there. Maybe looks like they're going to give him a couple of feet. No gain on the play. Brings up second and 10 for the Tigers on the Barons 30 yard line. Let's see if we can hold them. Yes, yeah, this is a big play here. I don't know anything about their team, kicker. whether they have a kicker or not. Yeah. I mean, well, a kicker, but here. is he good or not? We don't know. 47 yard field goal. There we go. Nice play in the backfield, and that'll stop Lauren O'Neill. That'll bring up third and long. Probably four down territory. Don't you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, for sure. No gain on the play. Brings up third and ten. And they gave that carry to Dickerson. I was wrong. On the Barons' 30-yard line. The field still looks good. Seven years later, it does. It does indeed. Pass across the center. A little bit. Too far out in front for Jason Lee. Shuler did a good job there getting out of the way and not getting called for an interference. He was right there. And 10 for the Tigers. You know, there's no way a high school kid's kicking this, so they're going to. Yeah, they're going to go for it. Yep, they're going to go third, fourth and 10, just under 10. 
The quarterback are in the Tribune today. This is his second full game. Yeah, I read that. There was a quarterback. They tried two of the other quarterbacks, Dickerson and Lee, and ultimately settled on. There's the snap. Oh, 21's got a, oh, fumble, but it's our ball anyway. Yep. Let's see if Woodbridge recovered. They did. Doesn't matter. Slightly better. was going to go over on downs. Uh, slightly better field position. Anthony Tavares on that recovery. Boy, they had uh, they had a beat on our guy down here in the right. They had him by a step. He had ours by a step. But couldn't get it to him. That was a fumble. It's on a 35, first and 10, 35. So each team now with a turnover. Here we see this again. Let's go back. Yep. Take another look at the. We picked up five yards on the exchange. Session stand is open under the white tent. There's Tavares curling it up. First and ten, Barons. Kasim Glover splits left. He's one of the top receivers in the county now. He is. Fudge operates from under center. He will move. Some some teams all go from uh, one position. He Lanier, he's wide open. He, he can go all the way. Water. He could. Oh, he's he not does. gonna catch him. A simple is, left sweep, and it's that is gonna be a 65 yeah. touch yard touchdown oh, run by Nathan Lanier as he turns around the left corner and goes all the way, 65 yards for a touchdown, John. You know who gets that assist is Kasim Glover made a great block on the outside cornerback and made made the uh, the run possible by Lanier. What a play. Let's see that again and see if we can see uh, Glover's block after the, after the uh, kick. Henry Rakowski on. Now this kid's an enigma. Harry Rakowski's an enigma. He's a sophomore. He can kick the ball 60 yards in the air. Right. But he just got to get some control on the extra points. Snap is back. It looks kick good. Is up looks and good. it is it's good. good. Nothing. And he good with 30 yards to spare. Watch Glover now, folks, in this replay. Here we go. Nothing fancy about this play, just a pitch left, and you see Glover down yep. there. Nice. You see him get the guy out of the way. And he, he held them long enough. Yep, yep. And that was Zahir Ellis, number 27, who gave chase for the uh, Tigers, but to no avail. And simple so the play, Barons, very simple play. Yep, just perfectly in there. We see Lanier getting some. Hugs on the so side. What have we run? Two offensive plays? <laughs> yeah. 65 yards on one. And then Barons will go back on defense. On the team now, Natapoka number 20, 12 is Isaiah Exposito, number 81 is Darren Tabon, number 17 is Tyler Bork, number 7 is Anthony Tavares, 21 is Faisan Tofik. Number two is Percy Martin. 22 is Breedy Arambolas. Number five, we have no number five. And number 21, I said him. And last guy looks like 18, Victor Colazzo. Kowski, nice end over end kick. Going to come down at about the 10. 10 yard line. That's Dickinson. He goes Get up the middle of the field. Now he cuts it out Get left. Him. But Percy Martin is there to drag him down. He's on oh, number players. seven. I'm sorry. Let me see who that was. That was Tavares, number seven. Anthony yeah, Tavares. Tavares. I thought it was two. So they'll start at the 25. First and 10, 6.45 to go. First quarter, Barron's on top by seven. As we open the new stands here on a, on a warm September night, John. Well, that would be October, but. All right. Sorry. It happens every month. They change. The, they change the, <laughs> the, 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 huh? It's Halloween season, man. And tonight's got so much going on in town tonight and this weekend. Hey, we have John John Haley with us, John. Oh, we do. Yeah, look at this. Nice. Maybe we get him to spend a couple of minutes with us. Hand off, sweep right, coming around, getting in the way there. Some Barons and a little bit of a gain, maybe five. Tavares is there. Percy Martin is there to stack him up. This was the game of the week in the Home News Tribune today. John, do you ever <coughs> stop playing for the two and four? Two and three, okay, two and three. John now writing for uh, his own blog, theauthoritysports.com. That's the authority, all spelled out, T-H-E-A-U-T-H-O-R-I-T-Y-S-P-O-R-T-S.com. Second five, handoff left, up the middle, nothing, no, he's got a decent game, but not a first. 
big play coming up. And if you pay any attention to high school sports, you, you, ought to, you, you gotta ought to read John Alley. You gotta read John. We subscribe to him in the town hall. Yep. Because it's nice to be able to print, print the stats out. Some of the stuff we have here came from John Haley. We do. So it'll bring up third and about eh, a long two. Total tackles for Woodbridge, in fact, 88. Oh, nuts, that's by game, sorry. No one has 88 tackles. That'd be pretty good. <laughs> Under center this time, inside handoff. Nothing doing, they got a punt. To Jason Lee, and good defense there by the defensive line of Woodbridge. Let's see who's under. So tackles for Woodbridge, it's uh, Percy Martin. We said before the game, what a game he had against Colony. He's got 52. Ryan Alcott plays a nice defensive end there. He's got 49, 41 for Tavares. Let's see, 31 for Flores. 25 for Lagrippo, 21 for Vince. Uh, I don't know the first name, Zacchino, though. He's a sophomore. This team is dominated by sophomores. Yeah, it's a very young team. I Seven said seniors, seniors four on defense, in. three on offense. So watch out for this team the next two years. Wait, they're going for it? Yeah. Yeah, they're going to yeah, try. Yeah, they're not going for it. They try to draw them off sides. That would be. That would. I was. I was reading the stats. I didn't even that didn't pay attention. Work. Tried to get us off sides. Didn't work. Timeout, Tigers. The timeout, Tigers, and nil. Now they're going punt. Yeah. But you look at the skilled players for Woodbridge, John. You were talking about it before. Zaire Robinson, the quarterback. Uh, I'm sorry, um, Tracy Fudge, the quarterback's only a junior. Kasim Glover, the outstanding wide receiver, is only a sophomore. Lanier's a junior. And they have some seniors sprinkled in there, Zanier Schuler and uh, Zaire Robinson, to provide some leadership and stuff. But they are uh, a young team, and it can be really good in the future. We said before how all three Woodbridge Township teams were favored today in the Home Loose Review, and John Haley just gave us a good stat. The last time all three Woodbridge schools had a winning record, take a guess. Ooh, let's see. Uh, oh, I'm going to say 2003. 1993. Wow. You're only off by 10. That's I wouldn't have guessed 1993. Yeah, I didn't. I thought it was too, too far back. Dickerson back to punt. Now finally somebody drops back. That's Kasim Glover. Backpedaling. He's standing at the 35. So they talked Pepper talked about South Plainfield's quarterback competition. Woodbridge had one too. The good news for Woodbridge is that you, you don't have Glover at quarterback and you have him as a wide receiver and he's one of the top. Now he's gonna keep it. It's it's a fake. Fake. We got to get him. We got to get him. Oh, we side, got, he got it. He, he got makes it. it. He got it. So a gutsy call there. Knocked out of bounds by Lanier. They saw something in the films and they, they yep. capitalized. Yep. He's fast too. He is. We should see that again. He made it by a couple First yards. For the Tigers on their own 37 yard line. There we see. You see it look they pinch. Yeah, 30 got him, but Alex not before. Flores realized it, but he wasn't able to get yeah. outside. He had made a move inside and then had right, to try to right. get back outside, and it was just too little too late. So the big play for South yeah. Plainfield. You know, they tried to try an onside kick the first to open the game. Now they fake a punt. They're playing like the, they got nothing to lose. And get pressure oh. from the outside, if he gets it off, and then oh, it that was six points. Off the hands of Jason Lee. And you know why he rushed that ball? Because he saw, who's that coming in? He saw Anthony Tavares coming. So if he had another split second to throw that ball, he yeah. might have gotten on, on the mark. But he rushed it a little bit because Tavares was bearing down. Lee showed a lot of speed. Let's saw that one. I want to see that play again. Tavares got to him. Let's see if he really rushed it. Okay, we don't have that coming up. So let's watch the play here. Second down and 10 for South Plainfield. Hand off to Gonzalez. Gets knocked down before he can go tripped up. Let's see who's on the bottom of that pile. It's Lanier getting the last one to get up. All right, let's go to that last play. I want to, want to see the pressure Tavares put on the quarterback. Comes in untouched. Oh, you know he saw that. Yeah. 
There's Lee Look at wide this. open. Look at that. They, they gotta, still should have had that, though. You get you. I know, I know. He should have had. They got to work on whatever coverage they had there. It was not good. <laughs> that had tie game written all over it. Here's third Dickerson down and motion. long. He's going. He puts it under. He's going to be short. Hit. Yeah, he's short. And then knocked down just short of the first down mark. Now, do you have the guts to go again on fourth down? Mm, I don't know. I don't know if you want to press your luck. Now, nope, looks like the punt team's going to come in, so we'll see. Yeah, they're changing teams, but that didn't mean anything last time. That's true. Glover back again. I started to say how Glover's one of the leading receivers in the county. Dickerson in punt formation. Spread wide now. Well, here he goes. Here he goes. Get him. Oh, he now he it. pooch bunts it. And it's a good job because it's bounced it to 20 and kind of died there. Tell you what, that was a, a roll away from being a fantastic play by Dickerson. That was also a couple of feet away from being blocked. <laughs> so Plainfield looking like they got nothing to lose. They're just, they're doing everything. They're coming in and having some fun. Well, you know, if they're two and three, they they're not out of the out of the question for the uh, playoffs. Right. Not if they run the table. Two more wins, they'd be four and three. That doesn't knock them out. Right. I think Dr. Zaga told me Woodbridge is the first seed right now. Kennedy's the fifth seed, and and uh, wait, Colony's the first Colony's seed. The first Kennedy's seed, yeah. the fifth, and and Woodbridge is eight. So eight would play one. Colony would play Woodbridge, and then the winner, if Kennedy were to win, would play Kennedy. But there's still two games to go, so those seedings will likely change. Motion now. That's Lanier. That's what he Some did. Well, oh, he, he just slipped, slipped down as he tried to make a Lanier. cut. He may have gotten that back like to the, the line of play, scrimmage. Didn't it? it did, but they got penetration in the backfield, and then Lanier tried to cut it back inside, and he and slipped. His feet went out from underneath him, and so he loses a yard. Now to bring up second and eleven for Woodbridge. Two sixteen to go, and that's only their third offensive play. They've been playing for almost 10 minutes. They've run three plays and have a 7 nothing lead. Yeah, well, South Plainfield controlling the the clock. But two sustained drives. Woodbridge has the play that matters. Out of the shotgun this time. Rolls right, throws nice. it out. He's into got Schuler with some room. He skipped Schuler. Uh, oh, still on his yeah, feet. Battling out to out about the 40-yard line. Schuler, that was Shanier Schuler. I said Martin. Shanier Schuler. The senior Game running back. It's a 21 yard play. gain out to the 40. The just out there, gonna spot it closer to the 41. The so a nice play there. So four offensive plays, 75 yards. You take that every time, huh? Yeah. Well, you wouldn't like the interception. Well, we'd say, yeah, the Barons come in. Clover split left. Here at. comes Lanier, handoff inside, nothing doing. And it's still on his feet and driven Carried back. Schuller. Schuller doesn't go down. Let's see here. Second and 11 for the Barons on their own 40 yard line. They got the two coaches booths on either side of us here. Yeah. In other press boxes, we can hear the opposing coaches talking. Right. And of course, we immediately text down to the sideline. Let them know what they're talking about. <laughs> Unless it's a Woodbridge team against a Woodbridge team. Barron's come in averaging about 370 yards a game, John. That's in amazing. Total offense. That's really good. Here comes Fudge, Fudge right. Rolls right. He's got 11. He's, he's got 11. He's going to tuck it under himself. He's got to down. pick up the first down yes. right near the line. I think he got it. Carried by Fudge. Let's see where they spot it. It's going to be right near the first down marker. Look I down think, field he, I think he anything. got it. No, not where they're standing. No, you're going to mark oh, about a yard short. short. It's going to be third and one. But I think this is four down territory for Woodbridge, too. Oh, it's dangerous. That's dangerous if you go for it here. But we don't well, have to worry see. about it yet. Yeah. We're going to get the first. Probably the last play before the quarter ends. Oh, no, maybe not because the clock stopped. Quick first quarter, though, huh? It is. It's been a very quick first quarter. No penalties. No penalties, just one score. Hand off to Lanier again. He's, He's got the first, first down. First down. Dances Gary for a couple more Lanier. yards. And Nathan Lanier having a great game so far. 
He went from C. 47, 47, first Three yard game will give him. The last game we had, John, remember, it took, it was a very long game. There were, what were there, 11 touchdowns? There was seven and four is 11. 11 touchdowns and. Cloney had the ball 10 times, scored seven. It was homecoming. Yeah, tonight was senior night, but that's a pregame thing. Next yeah. week will be homecoming. I don't know if you'll ever get a night as, night as good as this for an October football oh, Friday night lights game. It's just beautiful. Just yes, beautiful. Here comes Henry to game now. Henry in motion. Uh oh. Pass out. Nice oh, play. Man. That's it. That was a terrific play there by number. He read. He read Glover. Yep. He, he, Henry tried to get the block on him, but he read Glover all the way. Zakir Ellis. Read that well. Played off. Yeah, he, he actually had. Who was a Glover that was acting effectively acting like a blocker, even though the well the, Henry Henry tried the block for Glover, but it didn't work out too well. The end of the first quarter with the score. Get a quick replay in that last play, and then we'll take you to the end of the first. Then will take us to the end of the first quarter. So he's back throws right. Yeah, no. Henry. Yeah, he had he had Glover yep. covered the whole way. Yep. And that'll do it for the first quarter. It's a good one for the Barons. They lead seven nothing, and we'll be back with the second quarter. So stay with us, everybody. And Powers back to the about the original line of this uh, original line of scrimmage, and so that'll bring up third and ten for Woodbridge. On the Tigers' 47 yard line. Now, you think this is fourth down territory here? I don't uh, know. I'm not, I'm no, hoping we don't have to worry about no, it. Well, I mean, uh, fourth down territory would, it would have been fourth and one. I'm not sure that I would. Oh, all right. Yeah. Wait, we'll wait and yeah. see then before. No, we, I don't know that I'd be going for a fourth and. Before I put you on the spot. 10. Yeah, you're right. Linear split right. <clears throat> Can't see who else that is. It looks like Glover split left. Full house backfield now. Fudge Fudge rolls right. Looking down he's got field. 30, he's got There's 30, Lanier, little, high. A little bit high. And it sails over the head of Nathan Lanier. Lanier. Pass incomplete. I think we'll see the punting team on. Lanier, five foot nine. Needed to be about six foot nine to catch that one. Yeah, we'll see the punter on trots. Harry Rakowski, Rakowski comes in on the punting team Rakowski now. John Kozia. Number four, Darren Tabon, 81. Number 12, Isaiah Exposito. Dillison Bueno's number 50. Number nine is Zaire Robinson. 17, Tyler Bork. Five, there is no number five. How many times am I going to keep saying five? Remember the Monty Python skit? Yeah. Which one? There was one about the rules. Rule number one, two, three, four, five, and seven. There is no rule six. <laughs> Good we have snap. no player five. Look at that. Nice Left punt. Left footed punt. It's going to bounce hopefully in the right Dickerson. direction. Oh, oh nice way punt. Down, down that sucker. Oh, just oh, barely. It just barely gets into the end zone. It flirted with, with staying along the end line there. Yep. But it'll come out to the 20 on the touchback. Coach Calhoun's going to help us out here. Oh, five is Isaiah Robinson. Isaiah Robinson. Thank you very much. You should have recognized him. We know him from hoops. Well, you can't helmet. see with the helmets. Yeah, there was <laughs> know, Coach Nyers. Coach oh, Nyers, what a good guy. I like him. I like him a lot. He's, he's such a good uh, uh, role model for the kids. He comes out to all the American Cancer Society, Relay for Life things. First he himself is a survivor. Is he? Yeah, he's got a great message for the kids. He makes them, not makes them, he gets them all to go in June to the, the walk. They light candles and they just handle all kinds of, you know, odds and end jobs and in their uniform shirts. It's just a great thing for the program. There's a pitch to Gonzalez. Carried by Gonzalez. Tackled him early for, at about a yard, but he spun for four or five. 20, yeah. Tackled by Opoku. 20. It was a gain of six. Gain of about six on the play. Six up six. Let's give you the starting lineups for the Tigers. Number 55 is Xavier Wilson. Is the, they'll give you the lineman first. Usually we give them last. So the 55 is Xavier Wilson. Number 79 is Brian Shalali. Sweep left. A lot of room, but no. What a nice play by Lanier, and then he gets help. I mean, the Lanier, yeah, yeah. It's Lanier again. Gets help is that uh, Alcott. Tackled by Lanier and Smith. No, Smith, number six, not number eight. Six is Tyler Smith. No 
Shalaki, I guess. Brian Shalaki is number 79. Number 72 is uh, Michael Lampasona. Lampasona, I know them. Do you? Yeah. 64 is Nicholas uh, Galvin Lanes. And number 53 is Justin Counts. Let's see Tyler Smith and Zach Lanier now. He took two blocks. Who was that that took two blockers? That helped a lot. I couldn't see the number, but that made the play. Two guys had to block him. That left it open for Lanier. And gonna Smith, throw. here's a pass. No throw. good. Right into Picked the up. arms. Kasim Glover up has Kasim a Glover. touchdown. He's got a lot of room to run down the left side. And Get in there. <laughs> yeah. Over one. Tiger and then dances into the end zone for the second touchdown of the game by the Barons. By he looked touchdown like the intended receiver. <laughs> he did. He was wide open. Pass, I think, was intended for uh, Dickerson, but it went right into the hands of Glover, and he he can fly. There's the coach. He's and happy he's now. He's got to be happy. We see the cheerleaders, so everybody's happy on the Woodbridge side. There's the Baron and the Baroness. I don't know their names, but they were, I saw them before the game. They're dressed up. It's pretty cool. <laughs> What's happening now? Timeout? Um, I don't know. Gonna, looks, somebody called the timeout. It looks like Plainfield used one earlier. No, I don't know. There we see the Baron. Well, somebody had to call timeout because there, there's no flag. There's not. Yeah, yeah let's, let's see. Uh, reception again. Rakowski, we see warming up. Right there, I think Dickerson did yeah, zig when he zagged. It looks like he's got a clear path, and then yeah, but that guy nice got play there by yeah. I think it was uh, Gonzalez, the running back. They got over. Glover made a good play by the little little stutter step. Hey Joe, so was that a timeout? Do you know? Rakowski. Comes out. He's a big dude. Well, he is a big guy. And as I've said to you before, you know, he was on. He played baseball with my my Nicholas last year. So he's and he's a fantastic left-handed pitcher. He's left-handed, left-footed kicker as well. And that one is. Let's see. What happened? We got a whistle. Oh, uh, whistle! First flag of the day. Referee still didn't indicate whether the kick was good or not. So. Offside. Offside. Playing field was good. Look, where's the signal? Looked good to me. Penalty was offsides on the Tigers before the snap. Oh, uh, before okay, the snap. So That's the problem. Kick, kick yeah, doesn't count. The goal. We'll retry the extra point. I'll go out on a limb and I'll say, I'll say Rakowski kicks in college. I, my guess is Rakowski pitches in college. Yeah? Yeah. He's that good, John. I haven't seen him. Well, he's a freshman last year. He was the ace of the Woodbridge staff. Oh, really? It was all county. We probably did a game or two, but I don't recall seeing him pitch. Yeah. I'd remember a guy like him. Big Looks guy. good. Yeah, we got another whistle, yeah, but you that go. one is good. So Rakowski Thanks drills it. And with 9.24 to go in the first half, it's Barron's 14 and South Plainfield. Nothing. We'll take a break and be back. Stay with us, everybody. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we see the Woodbridge High School cheerleaders. They're pretty. they got a lot to cheer about so far, John. So far, it's a great game and a great night. A couple of big plays. That's a good kick. Deep coming inside oh, of five. Mishandles the butt, but picks it, uh, the kick up, but picks it up as Dickerson. And now he's got some room. And so, yeah, one of those, those plays where it knocked, the, yeah, well, sometimes it. The yeah, run the coverage. You get him, give him the coverage, yeah, it runs the uh, receiver, the right, uh, returner. Okay, we have Alex Lagrippo. We have Alex Flores, Tyler Smith, Kasim Glover, Nat Lanier, Nat Opoku, Percy Martin, Anthony Tavares, and there's three more guys. We have Bernardo Sanchez. Quick pass. Quick pass out to Dickerson. Oh, he almost overran it. Good stiff, good arm, stiff arm, but good yep. tackle. Zaire nice Robertson, he was almost a face mask. No, that was Tyler Smith, number oh. six. The tag. It was five, wasn't it? Yeah, six. five. Oh, you're no, right. Six okay, okay, five. okay, six, I'm sorry. Good play. Picked up uh, almost eight. Let's give you the skilled position players for 
South Plainfield. We've told you the quarterback is Patrick Waldrop. Number 21 is John Shimini. Number 12 is Jason Lee. Watch the play. Hand off to Lee. Short of a first. Yeah, though. Near is there at the bottom of the pile, along with Ryan Alcott. Short gain on the play. Tackled by Alcott. Number 26 is Kyle Dickerson. We've heard his name a lot, John. Number 20 is Bernard Gonzalez. He's the running back. Number 19 is Joshua um, Sigentler. Big play for South Plainfield. We hold them here. They got a punt. Yep. Gonzalez comes in with just eight carries so far, John. So this is, he, he only played one game before. There's a pass nice. on the right. Nice, nice play by Tyler Smith. Smith. Forces the Saw punt. Saw that one coming. Oh, we got to see that one again. That was a beauty. Hey, Principal hey, Glenn, Glenn Lama here. Let's get him on the. Uh, Let's get him on TV. You got to stand up. You might not be able to see, Mr. Principal. Glenn Lotman, the terrific principal of Woodbridge High School, joining us now. In his first first year. Welcome, Glenn. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let's take a look Let's at this. Replay, yeah. here's, here's something you're going to watch. There he is. Watch this tackle coming through. by Smith. Bang, oh. got him. Reads the play, doesn't give up on the tackle, <laughs> drives him back. That's a heck of a tackle. The Great blocker play. completely missed him. I gotta say, Mayor McCormick, Mr. Coughlin, thank you so much for this. Our kids, uh -oh. every gonna Here's keep it again. Get him, get him, get him. Get him. For the first uh -huh. time. He's gonna get it again. So Kyle Dickerson still going. Still, yeah, he powers it up to about the 45 to the 46. That's a second fake punt that they've run for a first down, John. That's you would have thought we would have done some adjustments after the first one. Well, my guess is somebody's gonna hear about it at halftime, right? <laughs> you can bet that. Bet that. So, Mr. Principal, what do you think? You're the principal of Woodbridge High School when these new stands are unveiled. I, Thank you so much for this. You know, Mayor, your hard work. Mr. Coughlin, thank you, too, for in the town council. This is just the dream come true for everybody involved. This is just a phenomenal, phenomenal setting. Our kids are excited. The town's excited. Everybody's excited. Thank you so much. People are talking about it all over. It, the fields. How could you not? Stands. How could you not? It's, it's a, you know, I just ran up here from the, uh, from down on the ground, and I'm, I'm still breathing a little heavy. <laughs> Wishbone backfield. Come on, come on, Flores. Uh, got him. Nice cut by Gonzalez. Put him down, put him He's down. still on his feet and then finally gets dragged down there by Alcott. But I'll tell you what, that was a nice run by Gonzalez. Just a junior, five foot six, 170 pounds. Nice to have senior night with the stands done, right, Mr. Principal? Oh, you can't beat it. You cannot beat it. Parents were excited. You see the look on their face when they came out today. They, they were just as excited as the students. The we, we have a college the campus now here. We have a whole <laughs> college complex at Woodbridge High School and our other two high schools. Any college comp uh, campus would be... Uh, very jealous of this. Come on, Walcott boys. Stop him gives there. it again. This time to Dickerson. He's got room up the middle. Carried by Dickerson. This is not holding well for our defense here. They're giving up too many yards per play. Yeah, yeah. I agree. We've been bending Lanier all, all game. Them down and tripped them up. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, haven't broken yet, so hopefully it stays that way. Well, they've had a couple. You know, they've had the big interception for a touchdown. Forced them to punt. Remember, they forced them to punt three times. Two of them. <laughs> they ran. Fakes. Yeah, they're fakes. They ran them for first downs. South Plainfield team's very good. They're good. They're two and three. We're only three and three, a half a game better, but they're uh, they're moving the ball. 5.43 to go here in the first half. Walcott hands it to the up back. Carried by Lee. That was Lee. He'll pick up just a few feet. So, so how's the school year going? It's dream come true being over here at Woodbridge High School. I, I love it. I, I can't even say enough good things. It's so, the staff here is great. Students here obviously are great. Parents have been very helpful. It's just it's a true school community. This is your first year, and now we see the, the stands and you. Uh, yeah, they're filling up. The yes, they are. are Everyone's up. getting here. Everyone's Before coming the game, from the... said, Why did we make them so big? <laughs> but hey, you got a good look. crowd here. It's a good thing we did. We have a lot going on in town tonight, so. Well, yeah, you get the Haunted House. You got the Taste of Woodbridge. School yeah. Nine has their uh, Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest. Or my son's yelling at me because we're not there right now. Oh, really? Yeah. He my goes son, to my school son nine? goes to school nine. Yeah, loves yeah, Mr. Fitzgerald. Yeah. Loves, come on, Dickerson. get him there, boys. Tell you what, he's a good back. He he's, makes he's a nice tough. play. Finally again, dragged though, down by Olcott. But way too many yards. They're averaging over five yards a play. I made that up, but I mean, it's probably, probably pretty right. close. I, I should, I, I guess. I know. But is our Colonia or JFK home tonight? All three are. Oh, all okay, three are home. Oh, wait, no, 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 I'm sorry. Island is that Perth Dan boy. Kennedy's that Perth Dan boy. Take another look at that run by Dick Dickerson, excuse me. 
Cuts, makes a nice move and oh, just missed the tackle upfield. there, and he picked up another eight after that missed tackle. So the Ten Tigers eight. are on the march here at the 29-yard line of Woodbridge. Hand to no. ah, Gonzalez go. met in the backfield. First there to meet him was big number 59, and it is Alex uh, Lagrippo. I believe he's only a sophomore, Lagrippo. I could be wrong. Okay. Lagrippo. I believe he's only a sophomore. Is... Uh, no, we're not on 59. Our sheet. Yeah, 59. He's oh, not on our sheet. Yeah, it says that well, column. Got, say what year? Yeah, the column got cut off on that. Stat. This is an underclassman dominated team, though, Glenn. It is. It is. Seven. Senior sees significant time. Only seven out of 22, and a lot of sophomores. Yes. Yeah. Next year, the future is bright. But I'll tell you what, they haven't given up on this year either. Still can make the playoffs. Oh, There's Dickerson the again. A lot of room, but that closed quickly Very that hole, and he's going to be stopped short of a first down. And my favorite thing about this team is every game, every quarter, Tackle they've improved. They've Pardon? improved this they've, team. They've, yeah. They haven't stopped improving. They haven't stopped working. It's a real joy to watch him play. Well, the mayor said it a couple of times. We, he could be 5-1 and one right now. Yes. A one point loss to Bishop Barn, a seven point loss to uh, Carteret. Carteret, right? And Carteret's a pretty good team. Very good. Vincent's a keynote number 60 in now. And their other loss, of course, to Colonia, who's having just a special year. We were right there until the fourth quarter yeah. with them. They, they, our boys, they worked so hard. We watched the uh, replay a little bit in the studio. Yeah. It was 35-27 and the fumble deep. Yep. Yeah, if he gets in there, go for two. It's a tie, tie ball game. game. 35 up. But Third you know what? When you go, when you're going and on the road. Tigers are going to have to call another timeout, John. Excuse when you, me. When you're going on the road to play a 5-0 team, you can't make mistakes. It's that right. simple. And they had a couple of key All mistakes. Absolutely right. They, Students. Yeah, they made, I think, five turn. I think there were five turnovers by Woodbridge, three fumbles, and I think two interceptions. So. Two that were memorable, but, yeah, yeah they, they had a lot of turnovers. Yeah. During your lunch in the school store, Thursday, 630 to 930. So, yeah, it's a busy time here at the high school. Always Where, where's Always the Horned, Horned House at? The Horned House is uh, 1500 Railway Avenue. Okay. I believe the old Amorex building. Yeah, building yeah. Right that's, across from the prison. If you that's where it's been the last couple of years. Well, right they had two years there, then it took two years off. Okay. And then they went back there. I stopped by there uh, earlier this afternoon, or after school, as you see, you know, what's going on. Miss Amory was nice enough to give me a tour. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's worth the money. It's, yes. <laughs> it's a tour with the lights on. I got one of them Wednesday night. We looked around, and it's, uh, they do such a good job. She told me to bring the kids over at 7 o'clock tomorrow night because it's uh, the happy house. But happy I, house, yeah. I, okay. I, don't, I still don't think they're going to be too happy. But we're going to go through. We're going to go through. I go in every year with the camera. I think I'm going to do it tomorrow night. And I try to spook the kids, you know, get them out of character. <laughs> I mention their names and try to, you know, get them, get them riled up. And they, they stay in character. Then they're tough. Because they know Miss Ann will get them. Big, oh, yeah. <laughs> big third down play right here for South Plainfield. Come on, Wood. Come on, Wood. Shotgun. Lee. Get in there. Oh, just oh, missed almost. it. a flat. Uh, ah. Dickerson. He's going to get he the first tough. down and more. Inside tell you what, they, first and goal. They send him out into the as a wide receiver. They line him up as a running back. They got to shadow him. I mean, they yeah. got to put somebody on him. And Pete Smith and put him on him. Now he was their quarterback to start the season, if I'm not mistaken, I, right? Or was it, it was it he Lee? Could have been. Elon Capers in the game now for Woodbridge, along with Nick Figueroa. Here's that play. Oh, he yes. just missed. Just tipping missed. It. Just missed it. Football's a game of inches. So first down for the Tigers. Hold strong, Woodbridge, hold strong. Full house backfield once again. Movement by and Woodbridge. Flag on the play. A flag. This has been a relatively penalty-free game. Right, and a quick game. It's 20 to 8, and it's 2.39 to go in the half. It's only the second penalty I remember. Yeah. The other one was the kick, right? The uh, extra point. Yeah. It's against WB. Yeah, Dickerson was the quarterback to start. He leads the team in both attempts and completions. Let's and put and, and back passes. Hmm? Let's put him back a quarterback. <laughs> yeah, I'm bad. Well, you know, they got the benefit of making Waldrop the quarterback and then freed up Dickerson. We did the same thing with Glover. You know, talent like that and a receiver, he's, I said a couple times, one of the top receivers in the county. I believe he is top right now. Is he top? I believe so. He's a good kid, too. Great kid. Very respectfully, see him in the hallway. Always says hello, very nice. His grades are very high, too. First down and goal to go from the four. Give to Gonzalez. Get him! Hit ah. the backfield okay, we'll by that. Robinson, and then 
closing quickly was 59. Percy Martin. Alex Lagrippo. Nice slow play there by Zaire Robinson. Robinson. Brings up second and goal for the Tigers. I believe this is Zaire's first year playing football. He's a senior. Yeah, I don't recall him playing before. Very good basketball player. Very good Very ball good player, player. Yeah. yeah. Well, from the basketball the game, you got the team, team. You got Schuler, you got Robinson, you got Glover. Yes. I can't think of anybody else and, uh, that plays. Keyshawn through. Henry. And oh, also that's, right. Scooby. that's right. That's right. Scooby Doo. So it's funny when uh, the basketball coach watches football, he's very, very panicky during a game. Yeah, I'm sure. Right. Stop Hand him, off stop to him, Dickerson him. again. He goes around the right side uh, and he scoops uh, in for the touchdown. Bangs off a of Woodbridge Dickerson. player and gets in there for the, the touchdown. He's a good player. Very Game's good. a long way from being over, man. So a long short, drive. Short-lived 14-0 lead. That was a long, sustained drive. I didn't write down how when they, no, they got neither, the ball. No, me neither, but that's three drives they got they it in had. the 20. That was a long I think one. they got it in the 20, didn't they? Get it from, didn't they go in yeah, the end zone? Yeah, because the kick bounced a few times and then just went in the end zone. Well, let's see who's going to kick the extra point. I think it's going to be number 18, John Garcia. He's a senior. Garcetto to hold. Better get off the field. Yep, they're off. Wander. Snap his back a bit high, but gets it down. The kick Looks is up, good. and yep. it's good. So South Plainfield marches 80 yards and cuts the Baron lead in half. It's 14 to 7 with a minute 49 to go. Let's take a look at that touchdown one more time. Strong run. See Dickerson and goes on inside handoff, we'll makes a nice arc, and picks up a head of steam and rolls and into it for the touchdown. And argue with him, he's talented. Yeah. Well, Shabu made a good call, saying it's the game of the week. Yeah. Yeah, it was good yeah, call. So far, so good. Living up to its billing. Well, if the, if the season ended today, you'd be in the playoffs, right, uh, Glenn? I, I believe so. I believe uh, we'd be I the eighth seed, eight seed. Yeah, traveling all the way down to Cloney again. We've got a lot of our students uh, very excited. I know Cloney doesn't want to play you again. <laughs> Been there, done well, that. And you never want to have to play somebody twice. Right? Particularly that. a Crosstown rival. Yes. Well, plus the emotion of the yeah the whole Woodbridge Colonia rivalry. Sure. Is, anything can happen. And that game is traditionally the Thanksgiving game. Right. Got moved because it had gotten skipped a couple of times because of the playoffs. Kind of a wobbly kick. That's going to go out of bounds and there will be a penalty. One of the bounds at about the 27. So they'll get it at the 35, I believe, right? I move back five and redo. Well, the move parents have a choice. Well, they get they get to take it at the 35, or they get to move it I'd back five and redo it. I take it, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. I'm white. They're going to take it on the 35 yard line, line first and ten. No time goes off the clock. Woodbridge with its full. No, I'm sorry. Woodbridge has two timeouts. Not that it's a big deal, but you save the time it would take to yeah. return the next kickoff. Absolutely, yes. Save yourself a timeout. Yeah, 149 is uh, not a lot. Snap. Fudge out of the. Come on, break that. Got Glover. Glover. Okay. Picks up about eight. Fudge to Glover. Fudge operating out of the shotgun on that one. And Barron's going to go with the hurry up offense. Except they're not hurrying. It <laughs> never seemed to hurry enough, it seems. It really yeah, takes you start, long. start looking at the clock and second say, down, wow. Second down and four. Another pass. Uh, nice defense. Yeah, good, good defense, defense there by number 27. That's the here Ellis. And so the clock will stop with a minute 24 to go, and Woodbridge will face a third and four from their own 42-yard line. And this is a big play because if they don't get a first, they have to punt, and you leave uh, South Plainfield the ball with a minute to go or more. And two timeouts. And South Plainfield gets the ball to start the second half too. Right, we got the first one. You're right. See. You could be a football analyst. <laughs> I'm trying to be like you guys. <laughs> yeah, help you aspire to better. <laughs> do, you guys do all the games. Fudge, fudge roll. Watch your back. Right. Come on, Crow come on, Z. Up, Crow it up. Get up there. Oh, oh, he is strong. Go, Z. Go, Z. Go, Z. Go, Z. Zanier Schuler. What a great play. Oh, what a play. Oh, that's a great play. Seven yards, 68 yards, let's call it. That's a great play. Holy cow. He should have been done for him. Not even get a first down. That's heart, heart right there. He never gave up. He never gives up. I love that kid. Love them all. 
That's that's our team right there. They never give up. That's where they keep getting better, and you can't count them out. Boy, with a minute and 11 to go, that hurts if you're South Plainfield. 58-yard yeah. touchdown. They had them stopped in the they back. We'll stopped. take a look at it. After the extra point, we'll take a look at that again. But good defense had it. He breaks a tackle. He gets loose, and then he's got that breakaway speed. And Robinson goes 58 yards. There's the snap. Nice snap. Oof. Good placement. Oh, good. Blocked. Blocked. Uh, yep. 21 got his hand on. Is blocked. 21 came around the end and got his hand on. Let's go back uh, to the touchdown. Chilling me. I was just going to say, too, that these extra points are key. It is. You know, they are. Because it we forces go. you to go for touchdown. two later on. And we're going to take another look at that touchdown pass right now. You see, see, right there, see right there. Right there. Schuler doesn't have, stop. They Schuler kind of blocked does not each stop. other, and there he goes. He's on his way. ZS3 is on his back. Zanier Schuler 3. <laughs> and he kind of walks into the end zone. And I believe almost... If almost, we look at that, I don't know if we can get at it again, but you can see the the uh, South Plainfield players kind of pick each other off, knock yeah. them away from each other as, they, as the... Uh, I think it was Dickerson that had him. But he was on his back. He had him, but he just, just didn't bring him down. Strong players in here. So fudge to Robinson is good for 58 yards and a touchdown, and the Barons take a 20 to 7 lead. Look good at that kick. kick. It's going to come back to Dickerson. It's going to bounce in go. the end zone. He's going to let it go. go. And he'll start from the 20 That's with a, a minute. 60 11 yard ago. kick. I used to coach Harry when he was in about, about third grade in soccer. Yeah. Fantastic soccer player as well. When was the last time you saw a high school kid kick in the end zone? Um. I don't know. <laughs> every, every, every time I see him kick, but yeah. aside from that, no one. Yeah. No one. Only a sophomore, too. Yeah. Uh, and I was well, Craig, I, I said the kid's going to kick in college. Craig said, no, he's too good a baseball pitcher. Yeah, I heard he's phenomenal. I got to see him all last year. Coach Rabanel talks very highly of him. Yeah, we'll take that look at the touchdown. He slips the tackle, slips the first tackle in the back. That should have been dead loose. About five yards. Now here's first but down. see those two guys run into each other and they knock each other down, and there he goes. Oh, there's a big time yeah. block, block there by yeah. Smith. Tyler we Smith. didn't mention that. And then further down, number five, Robinson had a key block because the guy pushed him out of his way. There's two, Clear the path. two guys helped spring him, number six, Smith, number five, Robinson. While we were away, there's no uh, Ryan Alcott made the tackle. They stopped the Tigers. We call him a lot. We call Alcott a lot. They're going to keep the Alcott clock running and huddle up, so I suspect they're not going to. I don't get it. Trying to move it well, down. I guess you get well, it got, deep. You don't want to give a turnover. Well, they got two timeouts left. You already had one pick six. You don't want to do another one. Certainly not playing this like they're trying to <coughs> do anything. Hand off to Dickerson. Here. Here we go. He gets stopped. Carried by Dickerson. 29 seconds Tackled to go. By and that'll bring up. There's 26 from South Plainfield. Is he a senior? Third and six. Third and seven. I don't know. Is he a senior? Who's He's that? a good player. Dickerson. Dickerson is, 26 a, uh, is a, yeah, he's a senior. Senior, good player. If we see that touchdown again, watch watch the blocks by Smith and Robinson. Yeah. Senior had a three a seconds free. to go. They're not even going to snap the ball, okay. and that will take us to halftime. It was a good one for the Barons. Tigers. Now wait. Timeout. South Plainfield. Someone explain that one to me. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I get that. But anyway, left? Lee, can we see that one again by any chance? I want to see Smith and Robinson and see what kind of. Because Sheer, Sheeler was not touched well, the, after the two guys collided, and that's because of the blocks. Let's see if we can see it. Play. Here he comes. Makes a nice one. cut back here. Two These guys had him. They were each other. Right, right there. Off. Smith sets him free. And there we go. Further down, you, you can't see it. No, you can't see it, but Robinson sent it. That's why he was so open. Yeah. So there will be three seconds left on the clock. Three seconds. They're going to put three seconds back on the clock. Uh, anybody want to venture a guess as to why they did that when they didn't try to score the first two plays? They, they didn't. They huddled up. They took their time, and then they called timeout with three seconds to go. When the clock had <laughs> run out. And I don't know. Stop I, him here. I can't even begin to conjecture as to what doesn't the, make much sense. You're right. 
Well, everybody's you got three guys in midfield. So I guess they're going to try a Hail Mary pass. Three line. You got Robinson. You got uh, Glover, and I can't see who the last guy Apoco. is. Now Woodbridge oh, calls a timeout. So they didn't. They saw so much a for formation. a fast game. Yeah, they saw a it's formation well that they weren't ready for, and so they do it. Different angle on a touchdown. Let's see it. Oh, good angle. Slips to one, breaks to two. Smith comes in. And here's Smith. Here, there's Smith. Yeah, uh, he didn't really he held him up way. long enough to get him. Now watch out. Robinson, Robinson at the top. Watch right him. There. Probably didn't matter. Probably wouldn't have caught Schuler, but Robinson, give him credit. Made sure he was blocking all the way. Yeah. It's another play, another typical play of our team. It's been a, a half of big plays for Woodbridge, right? 65-yard touchdown run by Lanier, interception for a touchdown by Glover, and a 58-yard touchdown pass to Robinson. I mean, talk about. South Plainfield has to be dominating time of possession. Oh, they yeah. Are. yeah they've, they've I think one of my, I'm half keeping track. I only record nine plays, maybe ten. Then again, I could have just missed him because I'm too exciting to keep track. <laughs> this is an exciting night, man. It is a good, it's a it's a good game. Night. Same formation. Four guys left. Now in motion is Dickerson took the and pass. He's going to so keep it and run up the right side. Good job, Nate. And Good job. Dickerson goes down, and we will Flores and Apoku. I don't get it. This uh, halftime? Four guys left heading down the field. You didn't even stop and try to throw it to them. <laughs> <laughs> well. Good question. Didn't fool anybody. Well, so that will do it for the first half. A big first half for the Barons. So, Glenn, how many home games have you had? Sorry, Craig. How many home okay. games this is our have first, you had so far? We've had two. Uh, we had Saturday afternoons. Well, all three again. touchdowns. Here comes Lanier first. Watch untouched, this. untouched, and just takes off, turns on the Jets. One man to beat, and you can't catch nope. him. Only a junior. Here comes Glover. If you play football or cheer for one of our many top Warner teams, I love the patience she shows here. Yeah. Stops a little bit right here. Knows Stutter, where he yeah, let's Alcott, let's Alcott get there, and then, there, and then he extends. Yeah. Get in there. Yeah, we didn't give great Alcott play. credit on that, but he had a great block. And now the play we just saw. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, their touchdown, yeah. There's Dickerson. Sort of like a red zone montage. I don't know if you guys watched the red zone or have ever seen it. It makes Sunday great. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the big one. It's a staple in my house on Sundays. <laughs> That's a great run. He is a strong, strong young he man. He is a strong he is guy, built. yeah. Strong young man. Another so you nice boy, too. 6'3", 180. You had home games already? We or had you, two. No, no. Uh, there was Saturday uh, during the day. That we right, played, right. Uh, no, you didn't have Friday. We played Perth Amboy, and we played Car uh, not Carter. All New right. Budget. So let's thank uh, Principal Glenn Lottman for coming by, giving us some, some of his time. We appreciate it. Good luck the rest of the season. Good luck, with the more importantly, with the school year. Thank you so much. And again, Mayor McCormick, thank well. you so much for the stadium. Okay, buddy. And we will take a break. We see the cheerleaders. We'll be back with the second half, so stay with us, everybody.
Welcome back, everybody. As we get set for the start of the second half, John McCormick, Craig Coughlin, happy to be with you from Woodbridge High School as we roll out the new stands. And, John, it's been a tale of two kinds of offenses. Woodbridge with big strike capability, big plays, and a big interception, and a sustained, hardworking, methodical uh, offense for South Plainfield. I'm nervous because I think they're essentially outplaying us. You said it, the big play, the linear sweep, nobody Second touched him. Schuler bounced off a couple defenders, and then nobody touched him in the pick six. Three big plays, and otherwise, South Plainfield is uh, out gaining us, out time of possessioning us. If that's, that's not a, exactly a grammatically correct statement, but they've controlled the ball. They've controlled the clock. But they've controlled the line of scrimmage. They're getting, they're probably averaging over five yards of play. But who knows where they would have been if it hadn't been for those two fake, fake punts for right, first right, downs. Right, right, true, true. Rakowski set to kick it off. He'll hit it at about the, not about, he'll hit it at the 40, end over end. It's going to be a oh, short nice. kick. He drops it in there nicely. Low, loose ball, hit him. Get that ball. We, no. 
play. He placed that perfectly. Yeah, that was nice. That was number 24, Warren Reels. We're joined by Kyle yeah. Anderson. Yeah. Kyle, you want to pick up the uh, headphones? Yes, head sir. and join us. Council President Kyle Anderson has popped into the booth. And a big supporter of uh, Barron football. His son graduated here a couple of years ago, now plays for TCNJ. Hey guys, how are you? We're fine, Kyle. How We're warm. <laughs> We're dry. And it's beautiful up here. I mean, this is an amazing press box. I'm sure you guys have commented on it several times already, but this is really, really great. It really is. Professional. It's even more great if it was cold and wet. <laughs> Tackle be not behind the line, but no gain. Man, Maybe no a gain, two man. yards if you count forward progress. Now, prior to coming up here, I actually grabbed a copy of the history and traditions of oh, Woodbridge High School football. That's right, Dr. Nick Sardone. I didn't mention that yet. Yeah, I was just thumbing through it, and uh, this is a unbelievable uh, volume. This is like a thesaurus is here, or some type of uh, major piece of work. And a lot of a lot of homework, a lot of research in that. Yeah, yeah. He and uh, George uh, Patrick Ryan, who was a local accountant here in Woodbridge, uh, put this together over many years. It's got to be about, what, 400 pages long? About that. Second and seven. Ball drop under center this time. Takes a snap. Quick, quick oh, pass, good right block there. there. Lock it down. Number was, 14, Alex Flores. Yep. What a play. Flores, six foot three, and it was a real problem for Waldrop. Flores, one of the seniors here That's tonight. Celebrating. Not many, right? No, not many at all. I, I mean, there's a, probably a number of them on the team, but uh, uh, that play significant minutes. It's just uh, seven, you think you said, John? Eight. I'm counting them Eight. up now. Okay. Eight, maybe. Third and seven for the Tigers. Well, Coach Nyers was quoted today in the paper of talking about his contribution of his sophomores and his juniors. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, it looks like the future's bright for the Woodbridge Barons. Absolutely. Third and seven now. Big, big play. I formation in the backfield. Waldrop fakes the handoff. Not much of a fake. Gets oh, pressure going right up the middle. Nothing and doing. Gets, nothing doing. Comes up short. That was. That wasn't a good Alex pass. Alex Lagrippo, who came right up the middle and really wouldn't let him step into that throw. Right, putting, Kyle? Putting some pressure on him. I was actually talking to Alex's dad, Rich, down in the uh, bleachers. Uh, he's a big fan, and uh, his, his son is really stepping it up on the defensive line. I'll tell you what, he got a lot of pressure on him that time. So if pass falls on him, now let's see what happens. I'm interested to see what happens here. Twice before they've run them for. This is fourth and seven, though. No, there he goes again. He's going to no, kick it, though. He, he oh, oh, he, he gets it that one. It's going to. Oh, he shanked it. it. Wow, yeah. good field position if for you the recall, Barons. That was the third. This is the fourth punt of the game. That's for a risk. That's the risk you take when you do that. South Plainfield, you recall the first one they ran for a first down, the fake punt. The next one he did that running kind of punt, and it, if you recall, it he got a good uh, good roll. punt down inside the to around the ten, if I'm not mistaken. Then they ran it for a first down again on fourth down, but that was fourth and long, and now this one where he tried to do the running punt. And just got too much of his, I think he got it up too high, got it off the top of his, yeah. got it off his ankle as opposed to his foot. And so the Barons in great field possession. You know that Coach Nyers was talking about the punt team, punt oh, coverage yeah. team in the locker room. Start at the 37 of South Plainfield. Fudge. No receivers here, just three in a slot on the right. No, I mean, nobody wide, I should say. Fudge. Oh, Neeler, is, uh, Schuler's in there now. Oh, Schuler, but that's right. They hiked the ball to Schuler, and then we got a penalty flag. Penalty, that's not going to be good for us. Flag on the no, a little bit of uh, like the single wing offense that they, they showed some of last year. You, it's a similar offense, direct snap, and um, Schuler's the guy that you want back there for that. Yeah. Don't forget, he was the quarterback last year until he got hurt, and then the uh, Glover came in. Now yeah. Fudge is out. Love oh, no, it. he's just getting to play. I'm sorry, he's not out. See what the call is. Could, look, maybe uh, I mean if it's against South Plainfield, it might be a so. face mask. That's, I didn't see. Still milling around. Here we go. Face. Oh, mask. it is against mm -hmm. us though. Penalty is a face mask on the Barons. Oh well. Right call, wrong team. I didn't. It just didn't seem like it was. Uh, at least it seemed like it was against us. South Plainfield didn't move, and we were moving back. On a runner, I guess on he tried runner. to stiff, stiff arm, arm him and face. got too much of the face mask. So that'll back the Barons up five, and it'll bring up second 
from a spot on oh, no, first, foul, so it's second and 17. All right. First, uh, they he was caught behind the line moment. of scrimmage. Yeah. Replay the down. Fudge now all alone out of shotgun. Fakes the handoff to Henry. Rolls left. He's this got time. Robbins. No, Cuts maybe. Cuts it back upfield. Moves around a little bit and then gets down inside to the. Of the 40 down to about the 37, that's about where the original line of scrimmage yeah, was. So they got all of that back. And that'll bring up second and 11. Robinson was out left, down and out. They'll open mark. for a split second, but not long enough for Fudge to hit him. They'll mark it just a yard short. Shooter's limping. Yeah, he's had a nagging injury for, oh, as long as I can remember. He's had some kind of high ankle sprain. And many times those things really just get re-aggravated. Is he better in football or, or basketball, Kyle? I think he's he's got more upside in football, but I mean basketball, he can he can light it up. Henry in the backfield, Fudge makes it. Oh, he's got screen play out oh, to Henry. A, nice read. What the heck is 79 doing way down there? Well, I think it was a screen. No, 79. 79 was a. I think he was listed as an eligible receiver. Oh, okay, Dave McDevitt. Yeah, he was way downfield. But it was a nice play by Zahir. Oh, no, sorry, Chalemi. We haven't called him yet, Dave McDevitt. His dad, Charlie, uh, helping out on the sidelines here. And it'll bring up a third and 11. This is a big play. Well, get half Wayne go for go for it and forth. You think, Kyle? Yeah, I I mean you're too far away for um, too far away for a field goal, but you know you're too short to where you're just going to give it up. My, I would yeah. I would try and uh, take a shot. Let's hope it doesn't matter. Let's well, hope. let's see. Here we go. Fudge fades back, looks down the middle, him. got him, wide open. Yeah! He's got him. Big number three, Beautiful pass. Schuler for the touchdown. Another big play for the Barons. Thirty-eight yards. Really nice. Right down the center of the field. Well, we could see that coming. Yeah, he, he looked in that direction. Uh, he had one man to beat, and he definitely uh, got behind his uh, his defender. Hit him perfectly in stride. Really did, right in the numbers. Just got talking about Schuler and boom. <laughs> there we go. We don't have to worry about whether they're going to go for it on fourth. Now we'll, we'll be talking. Instead, we're talking about whether they're going for two. There we go. Uh, and they are. Yeah. So. That's what the block extra point will do to you. Fudge yep. takes the snap. He'll roll right this time. Looking, looking, nothing He's there. Glover. Now throw it. Yep. Right there. He Glover. gets him. Glover, nice play. Fudge. Stepped right across the uh, goal hands. line. Ball hands. And I'll tell you what, he showed a lot of patience on that. Yeah, Fudge. He was running out of, out of, the, out of the field. Right. South Plainfield, Tiger 7. Here we Let's go again. He's only a junior, right? Right down the middle, wide open, just over the arms of the uh, defender and good play. Hey, wow! In. Now we can breathe a little easier. Well, yeah, Twenty-eight to seven. That's a nice, comfortable lead. Yeah, that's a good long. That's a good lead. You know, I was uh, looking in the paper earlier in this week, and I said, "When was the last time that all three township teams were ranked in the top 10? Yep. When we said that before, and favored in games right. they're playing. You weren't here, so you don't know the trivia question. Go ahead, John. Okay. Ask him. Oh, when's the last time uh, all three teams, all had, three a teams had a winning record? All three teams had a winning record? Yeah. I'm going to say 1992. Oh, 1993. You're good, man. Oof. Okay. Wow. Was that a guess, or did you have a reason for saying that? No, uh, well, I remember in 92 was uh, Woodbridge was state champs. Oh, I believe okay. Kennedy was in the playoffs, and I'm, I'm, I remember the uh, kickoff to just Colonia, short of 30. Yeah, Colonia Dickerson. team having some good athletes. I couldn't remember their record in 92, though. And Dickerson brings it back to about the 30, and so a good start for South Plainfield. But they need to get something going here on offense. Well, they have not had great field position really the whole game. They've been in that 20 to 30 range a lot. Let me give another plug for our friend John Haley who started his own blog. John, it's called The Authority Sports. www.theauthoritysports.com. First and 10 from the 30. Hand off. Nothing doing. Still running around. Is that? Oh, oh, there's a loose, loose. ball. Right, they didn't call that. 
Woodbridge says they Rob, have it. Let's Robinson's see. Robinson saying they have it. Yeah, but he let's see if see it, they, though. Well, I couldn't hear the whistle, but let's see if they stop before it progress. Our ball. Like I say, Woodbridge, Woodbridge has it. got it. So oh, the Barons get it. Penalty. Recovered by the Barons. There is a flag on the play. Let's see who who probably some kind it. of unsportsmanlike down there. It's a, a, a Poku at the bottom. Clever has the ball. Let's see it again. It was it was the third or fourth effort that got them because he looked like he was stopped. Right. Uh, That's usually what happens. You go for that extra yard and uh, you start moving your arms around and somebody gets a hand or a helmet in there. Some point that it's better to just capitulate and let them tackle you because he, he wasn't going to break it loose. There were four guys who had him. He wasn't spinning out of it. And instead, they lost the ball. Hawkeye says it's our ball. Referees are huddling up. We're gonna see that again, guys. Here we go. We'll take a look at it again. Hit twice. It. Won't go down, Can't won't see. go down. Stand there it is, it's loose. I, as long as the whistle didn't was, blow. I don't know what though. It looks like South Plainfield like might have gotten it. Tyler Smith came in and uh, stuck his hands in there yeah, and caused that fumble there. Wall drop was there. It was well, it, it, what I just saw it is South Plainfield ball. Yeah. Because I don't care if somebody pulls it out. He has the ball, he's down on the ground, there's people touching him, it's over. See yeah, it? it all depends on when the referee gets over there and sees it. Because right, right. you get on the bottom of a, they tell these kids, don't stop reaching for the ball until they come over and tell you somebody else has it. Sayer Cone was the. But that play, I mean, it was pretty obvious. Fumbled. It looked, sure looked to me like it was a number 10 came in and, and got the ball. And was down and was touched. They're talking to the South Plainfield coach. And let's see what we have here. I think if they had replay, they'd overturn this if they give it to the Barons. I think it, you just have to have the ball for a second. Let's see what he says. Yeah. That's coach. That's a uh, might be going the other way. Yeah, yeah let's why not? take a look at it again. Here's the play. There now it is. comes loose. So I, the whistle, if the whistle hadn't blown, it's a fumble. But right he's there. It. Yeah, it's Wall right drop. There. He's got it. Wall drop gets in there. Did he get his? Did he get the ball under? Underneath them. You, you can't was, say he didn't. But it was. White right here, which makes his second yeah, down. Yeah, that's the right call. And then I we got a right dead ball, delay a game on black. That's going to move us up five yards, but it is second down. Okay. Hang on, hang on. The penalty was a delay. All right, so it was a delay of game penalty against Woodbridge. I'm not quite sure what they did wrong. But it, I think they got it right on the fumble call. It was yeah, a fumble. Yeah, definitely. It was recovered by Waldrop. And so it's second and seven for South Plainfield. Out of the shotgun this time. Looks downfield. Now tries to throws go short and throws nobody. it. 21 was going toward him. Yeah, that's the screen that Florida Calling State for perfected where they, they run the screen and they kind of run it behind their uh, uh, underneath the linebackers. They kind of come in for the ball and cut across the field, and they usually set up a wall for them to block. On their own 33 yard line. So big play for South Plainfield, third and seven from the 33. They don't get this, we get the ball back. Barron's in tight. Although, as you would say, punts for them are... <laughs> yeah, it's, you, it's you maybe, an off, it. maybe their biggest running play. Barron's showing some pressure. No pass. good. Oh. oh, intended for John Chalemi, a little bit too high. Incomplete. And that'll bring up fourth and fourth seven. For the I would think now you just got to do a direct just drop kick. Just yeah, exactly. No more nonsense. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's the way he punts. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, maybe just steady. You mean he doesn't, he doesn't drop back punt? Yeah, he doesn't. I mean, I'd be surprised, but. A few years ago, Rutgers was doing that a lot, the rugby style kicking, yeah. and you know, if they caught somebody sleeping, they'd take off with it, but here it goes again. He runs and yeah, I guess that's his way. Again, yeah. off the side of the foot. Yeah. Not really a good punt. Go out of bounds. Yeah. Let's see this. We good almost spotted. hit him too. I don't know who that was, but almost hit the punter. Yeah, but once he starts running with the ball. All oh, right, right. You're alive. You're alive back. Yeah, good point. 35 yard line. That's I'm sorry, 45 here, yard line. Uh, uh, Woodbridge. This is where they'll oh, spot it, and that's where the Barons will go to work. They're on top, 28 to seven. On four big plays. Yeah. If you remember, 
back in uh, 2011. Remember where uh, Zalzar was doing that right. kind of style? Oh, yeah, yeah. And he yeah. came back against South Brunswick and kind of burned us. You know, uh, he had to make a decision there, and they, they were scouting us pretty well. Here we go, right to the air. Look out. They're thrown down hard. Five yard loss for by Chalemi. Fudge. Fudge gets taken down, loses five on the sack. I don't know if they were trying to set up a screen play on that. I don't know. He looked out into the flat, but two guys bored down on him very quickly. Yeah. How many how many yards does uh, Fudge have uh, through the air? Because I'm not he, really... he came into the game with eight oh one. Well so... he had a forty two and he had a sixty five and he had a sixty eight. <laughs> Okay. Oh, no, Linear was a run. Sorry, Linear was a run. He's heard 121, so he's he's uh, only about 60 to 70 yards away from uh, a eclipsing 1,000 yards. Wow. wow. Here comes pressure. On the outside, he avoids that. Now he rolls right, continues to roll, and now he's going to throw it out of bounds wisely. That was a, it's a good decision by Fudge. He yeah, wasn't... but that's pressure two plays in a row. Yeah, I mean, right now, if they're coming with that kind of pressure, this is where you got to run a draw play, even on third down, just to keep them honest. Third and 15. You know they're going to bring pressure on this one. So it's worked twice. you got to figure the Barons will put the ball in the air. Yeah, I would. you know what, to avoid a big loss, unless they're going to work the sideline. Uh, to avoid a big loss, I'd come. I would actually run a draw play right here because they're, they're if they're going to come with the pressure, you could run right by them and at least get the ball up to midfield so you can get a good punt. Clever comes to the left. Henry and Sh and Schuler in the backfield. He's going to run left this time and he throws it out. So for Glover, it's complete. Get down. Okay. No, I think it's going to be complete, but it's okay. going to be short. They give it to him. It's going to be knocked out the 48-yard line. Picks up 10, and Rakowski will come in to punt. So they would, what you want, Kyle, they got 10 yards back, got to the 50. Yeah. So now he'll... Hunted away. Fourth Dickerson's going to line up, stand at about the 15. A few more yards, and you'd be tempted to go for it. Uh oh. A little bit low on the snap, but Rakowski gets it. Nice kick, end over end. It's Bounces good, at about the 20, comes oh. to Dickerson at about the 12. He decided to wait and then make a, make a play on it. Well, and he might have saved 10 yards. That ball was heading downfield. Yeah, it was a wise play. It's the old street football move, you know. Uh, you yeah. get the guys all around the ball, and you decide to pick it up and try to try to get past the coverage. Dylan Leon was there to make the stop. And so South Plainfield in need of some offense here with 6.19 to go in the third quarter, trailing 28 to 7. Got the offense. They need the big plays. Yeah, well, you know, they've moved the ball pretty effectively, but they've seemed to, to have broken down. Well, I mean, they've punted yeah. five times, six times, I guess, already. Looks like Glenn Lama said we're, it's been but not break. Inside handoff to Gonzalez. Looks to the Number left end. Chased him down, Anthony Woods. Anthony Woods, big Terry player, six foot three, 265. Also on the tackle, number eight, Ryan Alcott. Of about three on the play. Ryan Alcott, very active on defense, yeah. John. We call his name an awful lot. We called him since he was in fifth grade in the Bears <laughs> Trophy <laughs> basketball. Mm -hmm. Alcott, the good senior. kid, real nice kid. Yeah. Athletic family. His brother, uh, John, was a center here a few years ago. Oh, yeah. And he's got a younger brother, Shane, um, who's, a, I think, a sophomore basketball player. Ryan Alcott's pretty tall, 6'2". Yeah, he's a big dude. Tall dude, not big dude, but tall. Wall drop, takes the snap. Not the no. some time, looks oh. to the left. Go! Oh, wow. Boy, that was a nice Tyler read Smith. by Tyler Smith. He covered his man, then came over the other guy. Looked like Dickerson was going to get it, and then he came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah he, was, he was not covering Dickerson. Dickerson. He jumped it at the very last second. Can we see that again, Lee? There we go. Got some time, and he throws it. He's there, and boom. So he was covered 12. Seven for the Tigers on their own 22 yards. If he had caught that and been able to keep on his feet, that was a six. Oh, yeah. So here we go, third down again. 
for South Plainfield, third and about seven. Ball drop, talks to Dickerson in the backfield, takes the snap, looks left. Oh, nice gets play. Gets yeah, from the outside Lanier from made Lanier. That play. Yep. See who took him Eight. down, but Lanier it's, was on a tackle. Number, uh, number uh, I couldn't see. I couldn't see who it was. Uh, that was, uh, that's number 54? 14, Flores. Flores, 59 is on it too. That's and Bernardo Le Sanchez Grupo. in there as well. So fourth down and 14. But you're right. Uh, Nate Lanier jumped up, made the uh, quarterback hesitate. He had the pump because he jumped up in his vision. Left and, it for his uh, teammates gave, to bring him down. Gave his teammates time to bring him down. Exactly. I'll tell you what, the Barons have looked very he's effective not, on defense deep. now. He's not deep. Going to roll out and kick again. This one's a, it's not maybe working. a better kick. Well, I think that's just his style, John. Yeah, I think it's, it's on purpose. The punting game's not good for South Plainfield. That's why they went for it. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Yes. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's see that again. This. Lanier gets way in the air. Lanier comes from the outside. Leaps up. Seven. Forces him inside. Seven. Seven. Tavares all by himself. Yeah. Woodbridge in that was field possession again. Yeah, that was a classic. I'll meet you at the quarterback. Let's get going. Yeah. We have had the last several drives in very well, good field position. Yeah, and the Woodbridge defense has looked stifling the second half. Yeah, time. yeah, different, different look, different game. Now here go the Barons with a chance to really make it a mountain to climb. Four and a half minutes, a little over four and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. F fudge. Jet sweep. Hands the Carry by Lanier. Lanier hands Short it to Lanier in motion. And they lose, he loses about two. There's a lot of game left, but Woodbridge is certainly interested in taking off some clock here. Second and 12, ball to 44. Second down and 12. South Plainfield had a couple of opportunities in the first quarter, if you remember. Lee opened down the down the middle of the field, John, the ball oh, was right. just a little bit long out of his hands. A couple of passes that were underthrown. The guy tipped the pass. He yeah. got his full one hand on it, but didn't couldn't get it in. Second and but other than that, Aaron they've really shown an the the inability to move, throw the ball down the field. Here comes the pitch to Lanier again. Same thing, when he same for play. a touchdown the first time, he gets wrestled out of bounds time. by Dickerson. By you like to see those running backs get the ball in the sideline uh, uh, hand. He he kept it on his right arm, and uh, you know you fumble the ball, but you fumbled it to the inside of the field. You want to fumble it to the sideline. Like to see those players get that ball no, shifted left side. over. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was the same play, that sweep play that he ran. He broke for a touchdown the first half. Yeah, Nate is a, an explosive player. Not big, 5'9", 170. Fudge takes the snap, rolls right. He's got uh, three right there, Schuler wide open. Schuler so makes a nice first. play he to does. stay in bounds. He first wow. forward. First down. He made a nice play to stop there and then yeah. turn up field. He kept his balance, but his balance kept him low, and I guess his strength actually helped him run over the uh, defender. First so it'll be a first down for the Barons. And they'll move the sticks with 319 to go. Barons on the march. That's a nice play. Let's take another look at that. Fudge gets him in stride, makes a nice stop and cut up field. And without that hit, field. without that head first hit on the other top playing for guy, he wouldn't have had a first down. Fudge doing a good job throwing on the run, too. Robinson, yes, he is. As I said before, he's patient, too. Robinson, now Henry goes in motion, fakes the handoff, rolls left, looking downfield, not going to be much there. He's well, going to have to try to run out of bounds. He's got a penalty, penalty marker. That's usually a hold when you see that. But when he threw it, there was nobody there. I didn't see what, I couldn't tell what he was doing. There was nobody near him when he threw it. It's good, good downfield defense. He's called and holding, yep. By, uh, by South Plainfield, there was really nobody to throw it to. And no, so there was not. Fudge just tucked it under. And That'll go against the Barons. Ten yards from the uh, spot 20. of the foul. Spot of the foul. Oh, it was in the backfield. You're right. We got a hold on 79 flag at the 35. We're going back to the 45. Still first down. So Dave McDivitt gets whistled for the hold. This will back them all the way up. Let's see. Head referee is... Uh, Long time uh, 
Island resident, uh, Bill Borowski, and a coach in the youth leagues. 46, takes all the way back to 46. You can see Fudge is kind of straining out, waiting for something to happen. And of course, it's, it's tough. I don't know where the hold was. If he did it's the hold, hard. it was early. Yeah, it was. A, it's a hard. It's hard to roll, roll left and throw right when you're a right-hander. I mean, roll left and throw the ball downfield. So it's second and a mile. Schuler, first and a mile, I should say. Nice play. Still on his feet, fighting forward. Gets down to about the 37. They start counting possessions for South Plainfield. Maybe they have three more, and they got to score all three. Well, yeah, about eight on the play. 2.20 to go here in our 2.17. We can take this yeah. into the fourth quarter. Yep. Clock's running. We can take it into the fourth second quarter. And 15 for the Barons. So they we pick up, up seven. Up brings up second and 15. Line. Just keep the clock running. Lanier goes in motion. He'll get it. Coming around on the left side. And he gets taken out of bounds there by number eight. And that's Ryan Mortson. Morris. You don't want to be out of bounds, but what are you going to do? Well, clock, so the clock will stop. But, but look, it's only the third quarter. So no, but you know, but you're right. I mean, at some point, there's the, there's the numbers. They don't just want to start working the clock. They've scored seven points in three quarters. So they're going to have to score 21 points in one, one quarter yeah. <laughs> to. Uh, to tie the game, and that's assuming that obviously that Woodbridge doesn't score, which is not a given. Not a clock's back running. Four down territory also. Yeah, I think this is, I mean, Rakowski can kick at 60 yards, but I'm not sure he can kick a field goal 60 yards. Fudge going to get oh, some pressure. Nice move to avoid it. Now throws it downfield. Nice and, and he completes that's it. Be complete. That's almost the first time. Tyler down. Smith. Not short of a first, but it's. That's a heck of a throw. That was. He rolls out. Maybe. First down. Oh, maybe it is. Now I see the mark. Maybe it is a first down. Got some pressure from uh, Shalemi. No, no, it's short. Let's take a look at that again. Short by almost by less than a yard. Fudge avoids Shalemi and then throws it on the run. Nice catch. Yeah, you can see what a marker is. It's short. It's going to be fourth and two. Fourth and a long one for the Barons. Calling it a long one here in the booth. I'm going to go with two. I'm going with two. Barron's going to go for it. I'm going with it. a short two. <laughs> yeah. It's a short two or a long one. This is this is a. This is an they, interesting they score call. here. You're going to get well into the fourth quarter. All right. It's going to be an interesting call because they haven't really made a a short yardage play in in about a quarter. All right. I haven't shown you. Still not. Going to the he's going to go throw it. Now uh -oh, he's in uh -oh, trouble, uh -oh. and Chalemi will get him. That's what we didn't want. Yeah. John Chalemi almost got him last time. He did get him this time. So on the sack, the ball will go over to the Tigers on downs with 13 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Woodbridge had a chance there to, to put the game away effectively. Right. I think a first down there would have just about put it away. Let's take a look at the sack. He really didn't get have much of a chance to have that play develop. No. Outside linebacker came up, made a good play. Um, running backs, you know, in a, in a tough, tough block there. It was. First and ten for the Tigers. That was uh, the second sack of the year for Chalemi. <clears throat> Second on the team. Out of the shotgun now. That was awful. Fumbles the snap. It's on the ground. It's still Fumble loose. recovered by Woodbridge. I think no Woodbridge doubt has about it. it. That's Ryan Alcott who has it. Way to go, Ryan. So just like it. that, <laughs> six seconds later, the Barons get it back. In the right place at the right time. All right. Well, he's like motion. Let's take a look. He's a nice Wall drop never had it. He, he See, there he is. It. And then it gets he kicked. He sees it. That's what happened. He was about to get it, and then number 12, that's J Jason Lee, it kicked it with his foot. The play not didn't not look, intentionally. Did, did, uh, it just didn't look uh, no. didn't look right. So he played the position well because he wasn't actually, he didn't have anybody over him, but he didn't fly in because he was uncovered. He actually took his time going in because you never know if they're going to run a reverse, and he was right there for the uh, fumble recovery. 
So they go to work at the Bunch 27. The He's got some room. He's Shuler's got some the corner. room. Dickerson gets him and drags him out of bounds. It's about all you can do with Shuler. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's a big player. He's about six, two, six foot, 220 pounds, I think. Yeah, six to 215 they list him at, but you're right on there, Kyle. What do we have next week, Kyle, do you know? St. Joe's? St. Joe's, right, we haven't played them yet. Just a straight pitch, got the Lanier out in front of him. He turns it upfield and then he gets some great acceleration and then gets taken down out of bounds. So Kyle, have uh, since the when did the shore rivalry start with the Middlesex Conference? About uh I want to say five years ago. Have the three Woodbridge teams ever won all three? Because Kennedy beat Monmouth, Colonia beat Matawan, and Woodbridge beat um, Colesnack. Yeah. Have the three Woodbridge teams ever swept? I don't think so. Oh, yeah, I don't I would, think so either. I really my guess so. would be no. Yeah, my guess is no, too, but I, I don't know for sure. So a lot, a lot so of good things happening with Township football this year. That'll do it for the third quarter. Teams will reverse. End zones. And the Barons will have it. First and ten Look at 80, from the 19. Anthony Woods, what a big dude. Yeah. They list him as 6'3, 265. That's what I am. A couple of years ago. Woodbridge, Woodbridge, <laughs> Woodbridge, Woodbridge has some size that they haven't always had in the last few years. We see the flag, not much of a breeze, as we said, a warm, Schuler. You know, nice night, not hot, but certainly comfortable Carried night. Schuler Schuler. kind of rumbles that down, pickup of five, now about six. And the township update on a score, we have uh, JFK 14, Perth Amboy zero. All right, that's the way, right, at Perth Amboy? Yes, it is. Three men in the backfield now gives it to Schuler again, again. Who pounds the middle this time. How about any word on Colony call? I'm going to work on that one right now. Pick up of uh, maybe a Colony has so. St. Joe's tonight. You said Woodbridge has him next week. So to bring up third and about two. Barron's looking to drive this one in, John, and I, see. Really I think it's very iced. Yeah, but th this would put a stranglehold on it. Third and one. They can get a first down. Glover yeah, split left. Ball on the six. And oh. met in the backfield. He bounces off it. The Schuler puts his head down, and he may have gotten the first down. Let's see. That's I think he did. Close. Yeah, he did. Absolutely got it. He's down to the four. Yep, that's going to be enough for a first down. So terrific running there by Janir Schuler. The other thing, Kyle, right now, all three Woodbridge Township teams are in the playoffs. Yeah, I can't remember the last time that I, I, I've seen that. Let's take a look at this. You see, he gets met in the backfield, just knocked the guy down. That guy can't get him, and he puts his head down, dives forward for the first down. Terrific play, terrific run by Schuler. First and goal for the Barons from the four. Lanier, Schuler. And Martin all in the he backfield. Might be in. He might get he in. He is in. And Lanier. A Schuler, let's see. Touchdown, Touchdown Barron. I don't see uh, anybody signaling. We had to wait for the. I don't see a signal. I still don't see anybody signaling. Never did. No, maybe he didn't. The, the booth called it. That's why I reacted. No, they're going to mark it on the three. So it looks like that's the lineup for the extra point. Henry, Scooby Henry, the. Holder. He's a he's a good player. Rakowski, the we left. We saw him have a couple of nice plays last yeah. week in Colony. Very shifty, also a talented basketball player. I think he ran back a punt for a touchdown. Was that he's him? only a sophomore? Yeah, it was against Colony. Yep, it's up, up and good. good. So Rakowski drills it home, and the Barons take a commanding 35 to 7 lead with 10:32 to go here in the fourth quarter. After checking John Haley's the authority. 
we saw that Colonia is ahead, 28 to three. Wow, Take over St. Joe's. Let's tie the TV down. again. Let's see how far he got in. Schuler gets it, puts his head down, gets hit, but keeps on driving. And a little just stutter step right at yeah. the beginning, and he was like waiting for the play to develop for a second. I still haven't seen a rough call touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kyle, tell me about the um, the shift by Woodbridge down and, and because of school population. No longer have we have to play South Brunswick, East Brunswick, Piscataway, Sayreville. Uh, we're playing teams their own size now. Yeah. Uh, for years, Woodbridge was one of the traditional uh, GMC red teams. But a small, uh, very small red team. Yeah, yeah. We, were, we were the smallest of all of them. Actually, when before there was a group five, uh, Woodbridge was in group four. Woodbridge and Phillipsburg were the two smallest schools population size in Group 4. In the state? Yes. Wow. It's another good kick. And right now, I think all three of us. At the six-yard line. Uh -oh, Not to uh -oh. room. Right up the middle as Dickerson. He gets hit. Bounces uh -oh. off of him. Tackler continues to spin and gets forward to about the 38. But right now, all three of our high schools are roughly the same size in student population from what I remember here. Yeah, literally within about 15, 20 kids, they're right. all around the same size. The great thing about this is that Woodbridge, Colonia, and Kennedy are now all in the same section. Right. So they could end up facing each other in postseason play. How oh. great would that be for Woodbridge? Right now, they said before the game, Woodbridge is eight, Colonia is one. They'd play first right. round. Yeah. And if Kennedy wins at five, they'd play the winner. And with Kennedy, uh, with Woodbridge and Colonia losing the Thanksgiving Day game, them eight and one in the playoffs would essentially replace the uh, Thanksgiving Day game. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we got a timeout by South Plainfield. 10.22 to go. They're going to have to do some fancy drawing of plays over there. You know the only thing bad about this game at this point right now. I'm missing the taste of Woodbridge up oh, at the I community went center. I went there. I yeah. stopped there. At, uh, I kind of cut the line. Oh. Well, I told a... everybody I had a test of, to, to be a taste tester. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it was well, good. I had just a quick um, little bit of pasta from Mulberry Street. I had a little piece of beef from Chris Michaels. I had a sushi from Kona Grill. That's really the, turned into an event. Uh, it, really. I mean, last year, about 100 tickets were sold. Yeah, last year was 800. 900 this year. And I said to Vito, if I said, we need more tables. He says, no, nah, just wait. And as I walked out, which is probably about 20 to 7, it's opened the doors open at 6. It was manageable. It was good. Yeah. I thought there'd be a line. I thought it'd be a you know, crowd out of control. I don't know if people bought the tickets and don't use them or what, but it was very well managed. I think they also come in at their time. They get out of work. Some people get there early. Some people get yeah, there a little yeah. bit late. Waldrop takes the snap, fakes the handoff. Gonna, it looks like he's going to keep it himself. Keeping the ball loose. But when you count, nice I mean, play there by Alex Flores. The way that works is we get, we do all the details and we sell the tickets for five dollars that we use to offset our expenses and make money for the charity fund, and then the group sell them for thirty. So nine hundred tickets means. Uh, 22,000 was raised by the different groups in Woodbridge. That's just phenomenal. When, I'll tell you what, how many restaurants were there? It's uh, told 28. me today, 28? Or, yeah, 20. That's a lot of restaurants. Oh, you go over there, Bonefish Grill and their Bam Bam Shrimp. Oh, I had that in the beginning, too. Just, yeah. I can't have two in them. They're too spicy. <laughs> and then a little bit of focaccia bread from Villa Borghese. Hand off to this kid's good. Dickerson. Gets outside the 40, stays on his feet. I'll tell you what, he plays every play, offense and defense, and he's the punter, and he's the kickoff return guy. Wow. Total utility player. Six foot, 190 pounder. We see the inside handoff again. He, nice little seam yeah, there. Yeah, nice blocking. And then he goes forward. And def defensive end really caused that tackle because he, he didn't make the tackle, but he forced the player back in. 8.49 to go. Clock the ally of Woodbridge. Fakes the handoff. Going to go around down the middle. Nice ball, but a little high. Oh, you got to oh, be kidding me. That's, That's not catchable. Flag. Now he threw the fl flag Oh, that side, but then you also have rough in the passer. Pass oh, two was flags. intended for Trey Martinez. There's two play flags because the one is in the secondary. I thought they called it interference. Yeah, he's, he's taking responsibility for it. Z-Rob. 
Zaire Robinson. I thought the pass was so far over the guy. I said it was not catchable. I didn't think he had a shot at it either. But either way, they're going to get a 15 Yeah, you, re you rarely out. see that. It, it, it's uncatchable. They really rarely. It's got to be gross. And we get the interference. Pass interference on the defense. All right, we got. Uh, yeah, just stay where you are for me. We got defensive pass interference on Black, and we got roughing the quarterback on Black. All right, white. We got two penalties, as we pointed out, against the Barons. And now they'll sort it ask out. The coach, if, uh, if there's a choice here. They're starting off from the 43, so let's see how far they get. It's a spot foul, not. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a. It's a they'll take the rough in the passer. Yeah, they'll take the long. Pass interference is 10 yards, if I'm not mistaken, in high school. So they'll take the 15, and that will move the ball into Woodbridge territory. The ball rests on the 42-yard line of the Barons with 8.14 to go. Something wrong with the clock. You see the uh, scoreboard, I should say. See the way it's bouncing around there? Oh, uh, yeah. It's alive. You can't see that at home, but some of the numbers are flickering. Going Holdrup deep. Looks the left again. Picked off by Smith. Head for Lee. Smith with the inside oh, position. Oh, you called Makes it before catch. he got it, too. Back up to the 20, to the 25, nice to the block. 30, what 35, 40, 45, nice 50. Again. Down to the 40. Watch behind you. Watch behind you. Go, baby. He's go. going. He's going in. Get in there. Get in there. Yeah. Yeah. What a play. Wow. What a return by Tyler Smith. I don't see any blocks. 90-yard return. To Lee. Intercepted by Smith. And what a return. That was a fantastic return for Tyler Smith. He got blocks all the way back. And you, you notice he let's wasn't take running. A look at that yeah. again. He never really ran full speed because he no, was setting no. all of his blocks up. Yep, he was he was patient and he was you see, he catches it about the tw 11, 11 or the 12. 12. And here he comes back. See the eight yards. He's not, he's not sprinting like Great you said. Great first no, block. He's just letting There's the blocks block. develop. Then Dirty he cuts it back. Poku with a big block. And then he cuts Another it one from all top. with a big and block. And there he goes. What a fantastic return. That's wow. got to be one of the best returns I've ever seen. Absolutely. Now that's a play to remember on senior night. Absolutely. Let's the keep watching that sucker. Good. See what more blocks we can see. I think the last one was Alcott. The first one may have been Lagrippo. 30 was Lanier, I thought. That was his first interception of the year. And one he will not remember. The senior Tyler Smith goes. Here we go. 88, 89 yards on that return. Waldrop just kind of throws it up there. I guess it's more like a 92-yard return, right? By That's the time a pass it comes you want to make to the outside shoulder. There's a good block right there, our guy there. from the ground. There's Another a good one. block by 30. By now watch him read this and then cut back. He sees that the pressure's There's coming. Alcott. Boom, he's going to have the last guy to hit, and he hits him. Nice <laughs> block there. Look at that. He's, look at the, he's got a convoy. And if Poku's there for the last one, although he doesn't need Yeah, he does need it. Yeah, he, may, yeah, he, he got an angle. I yeah. had an angle on him. But he had enough field that he could have ran away from him. And we're just back in time. Nice, terrific camera work right there. Into the end zone, almost Coming down into the to end the zone. Two, another fumble. Again, picked it up. Oh, just missed. <laughs> A lot was, of mishandles. A lot of mishandles yeah, on that their ball, special teams. That's yeah. Warren Reels, the kick returner. <laughs> so Woodbridge will go to four and three. 42 to 7. The only not big play was a three yard run by Schuler. Right. In a 35 yeah. point high school game, the clock will be a running clock. And so now the clock oh, will run. We just heard from the announcement. We get a, a 35 clock. point lead. The clock continues to run, so there'll be no stoppage. So call up to the community center, Kyle. See if somebody can save you some food. Yeah. 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 Sounds like a play. Here we see some happy Barons along the sideline. This was a game that was supposed to be close. It was not. You know what's cool, though? I mean, the, the adrenaline Ball the, drop. was great Dickerson. tonight because of the new what, stand. That kid Dickerson. I like yeah, that kid good. Dickerson. He's, he's a good, good player. Plays hard. 
What a way to christen the new stands, yeah. huh? Yeah, the energy, everyone's telling me there's not a bad seat anywhere. No. Uh, they like the elevation because it's clearly higher yes. than uh, the old stadium. The old I forget if band. it's bigger or not. I know we talked about it in the beginning. If it is, it's not much bigger. The footprint is, and it's just, it's higher, and it looks more. Yeah, there's more seats. I, I'm pretty sure there's a, there's a decent amount more seats. But you're right, the footprint didn't change, because that would have required a lot more money. Yeah. So we can start talking about our post game. We got to get all the scorers on, which gives you Lanier, Glover, Schuler, and Smith, and you got to get Fudge on. Absolutely. That's yeah, a special teams. It's just a, a, you know, for any any special teams coach or any defensive coach. No on the play. I just had to blow my nose. <laughs> Flag fell out of my pocket. Two pick sixes. Clock is stopped. Two oh, pick sixes, goes. two big passes, and two runs. Well, before yeah. the Colonia game, Woodbridge had been playing very well. I yeah. mean, they, well, they two, could have been 5-0 and coming they, in. They really could have. Uh, you know, they lost the Carteret game by one touchdown, the Bishop R game oh, by one point. point. Yep. And the only real tough game was uh, the, the and Colonia we, game. We said before the game, that score was misleading. Yeah, absolutely. We saw how it unraveled, got away from them. Well, you have to recognize, and they, they, you saw that even in the uh, in the Colonia game. This Woodbridge team can be explosive. Yeah. I mean, we saw Lanier, the opening kickoff against Colonia, took it down. Was that what a 50 or 60 yard return to get it started? There was a punt return from from, from uh, that from, was uh, Scooby. Yeah, it was Scooby. Henry. Henry. He had a you know big punt return for that. They showed they show some big play capability, and they really put it on display here tonight. We've got three quality quarterbacks in Woodbridge Township. Got some oh, yeah. real good running backs. Yeah, I think. Uh, Roberts is up there in the stats. Well, the number one passer in the area is uh, Tenny. Tenny. Tenny he's he's, he's number the number one, one passer. From, from the number two passer in the, in the area is uh, is uh, Fudge. Tracy Fudge. And uh, Andrew Roberts, I believe, is the number six passer in the area. And he missed a game or two. If I, yeah, if I, he had a concussion against. Uh, St. Joe's. Ryan Marston is in now at quarterback for South Plainfield. He's a sophomore, so coach going to give him an opportunity to get some experience. John, that's the stuff we talk about that's, all the time. That's makes my a lot pet of sense. peeve in the high school sports. Every sport is my pet peeve. When you got the game is is out of control either way, up or down, you know you take your studs out. Yeah, absolutely. They're not going to come back in four minutes and thirty seconds with a running clock from a thirty-five point no. deficit. So get. Get this other young fella some time. Now, if the clock, if the uh, score gets back down below the threshold, do they go back to a stop clock? I, I would suspect they do. I, I believe they do. Yeah, yeah they do. Because the 35 point uh, mark is the trigger, right? That's right. And it's 35 or above. So. And 10 for the Tigers. On their own 35. Baron Band. So, are we doing a game next week? I'm not. I am. You can't. It's my wife's. Birthday. Your wife's birthday. Uh, we'll give you a break. Thank you. <laughs> Be home. You could bring her to the game. I could. But well, there's, there's a thrill. Hey, honey. Happy birthday. Let's go do Well, one. you know, she is the mother of three boys. She's pretty used to going to Atlanta. And my wife's a huge sports fan, by the way. Nice play by Flores. That's all wonderful. She plays fantasy football. That's that's wonderful. I don't think she wants to spend a Friday night 7 to 10 in the booth. I'm just trying to talk myself into it. No, <laughs> no, I'm not letting you, man. Honey, I got a, I got a great idea. I love your wife. I'm not letting you talk. I'm not letting you do it. I hope she's listening. I'm sticking up for you, Tish. <laughs> So 317 to go. I tell you, this feels good. This is so cool in opening night of the new stadium. Bleachers, yeah. fans, everybody's into this. Powers forward to oh, maybe a first down. They're going to stop the clock. Will they reset the ball? And it is first down for South Plainfield. To tell you what, you have to be impressed with the Woodbridge defense, too, in the uh, second half. They're different Ryan than they were in the first. Yeah. And they're defending the pass a little better than they did last week. They opened up slow. The first quarter for them was not good. Right. Even into the second half was overall not good. Take care, Johnny. 
John Haley saying good night. Theauthoritysports.com. Thank you. I appreciate it. I was holding Marks, there Marks. against number 55, but that's not going to call it Tom Urbanski. Yeah. That's complete. He was held. Let's see who else is in the game for Woodbridge because they got a couple of new guys. Nick Figueroa, number 52. Number nine, well, number nine is Taylor. We don't know his first name, though. Uh, that's um, Austin Taylor. Con Connor Taylor. Connor Taylor, all right. Edward Concitus. Concitus. John Cozia, number four. Uh, let's see, number 51 is Eddie Concitis. Number seven we know is Anthony Tavares. Number 20 we know is Nat Apoku. Number nine, who we don't have a name for. Uh, Taylor. Number Connor nine Taylor. is Connor Taylor. Oh, Taylor, okay. First down, let's see who else. If we have anybody else we can get on TV here. Scott Schroth is number 57. He's six foot 195. Isaiah Esposito just went into the game, number 12. Oh, out comes uh -oh. Zanier, I mean, uh, Lanier Lippin. Lippin. Number out 12. comes Glover. Let's number see who else went in there. Number 22. Did you say him? 22, Breedy um, Aramboles. Number 12 is Isaiah Esposito. You said him. Coach Nyers. So, some yeah, both teams players. putting in some. Uh, Backups. Give One minute some to minutes. go here in the game. Carry by Cone. The score ever become a tiebreaker, Kyle, in this uh, by like score, differential or points? What's the, if there's a tie? What's the tiebreaker? Uh, Purely head to head in the division? Yeah, definitely be head to head. But what about head three teams that are one on one against each other? Does it ever get down to points? It can get down where you have try try champs. Right. Um, and. I think they'll just they'll just uh, name you Tri Division champs. Okay. But if it comes down to um, for, for who gets stuff? into the playoffs, it does come down to um, power points. Okay. A well, power points, but not game points. Yeah, not game points. All right. So, if, so there's no incentive to run up the score. No. Or, no. or uh, yeah, I think they tried to take none that at all. Out what of you it. what you have to start doing is start rooting for the teams that you beat. Yeah, you want yeah. them to start winning. Yeah, they're going to play. Hurry up with eight seconds to go. Let's in the game now for see Woodbridge. if they get one more play off. Five seconds to go. Three seconds. This will be the last play of the game. Oh, almost intercepted. Almost. Number Can you 22. Pretty arm bowls. Yeah, him. <laughs> and he, I'll tell you what, he had nothing but green turf in front of him. Been, he would have been the third pick six of the game. And that'll do it. An impressive win for the Woodbridge Barons. And let me thank our crew who names I don't have in front of me. Oh, I got it. It's Adam Chinoy. Okay. Our camera people are Adam Chinoy, Asaraf uh, Bergenfeld, Raj Sharohi, Ryan Dawson. Our audio director was Steve uh, Kowesian. Our technical director, Emil Brandolfi. On graphics was Gina Forbes. Replay. Technician was Clint Higgins and our director, Lee Beckerman. Another outstanding and extraordinary job by our terrific crew. Let's take a Let's look at all the touchdowns. touchdowns. And we're going to be back with the stars. Of the Here day. goes Lanier first. There he goes. He's just out to the runs. races. Yeah. And we got the Glover pick. All right, Tom. He made a nice play too, letting the See the way he stopped for Alcott? Yeah. And Dickerson scores the lone touchdown for the Tigers. And then we have the Schuler, 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 three in a row. Boop, boop. And really, goodbye. Pure strength breaking that yeah. tackle there. I mean, I know you've seen him. I see him, in, you know, around. He is jacked. Yeah. Big kid. Right down the middle. Nice play to Schuler. Again. And you get a kid like that at that another. side that can also run a route. Oh, that's a two-point conversion to Glover. Yep. That was a nice catch. Here he goes again. Schuler's third Schuler third touchdown, touchdown in a row. Yep. Big night for him. Yeah. yeah. And here comes Smith. Wouldn't have think it would have been a pick six, but no. 90-yard return. Yeah, next game, next Friday, there he goes. 7 p.m. homecoming. First St. Joseph's High School. Lots of good, good awareness. Blocks. Just yeah. good awareness. Here's a great move right here because if he had stayed on that oh, course, number 12 was going to get him. Alcott, beauty. Here comes and a Poku. Right. And a Poku didn't give up on the play either. No. Right? Blockers had to be careful too because a lot of times when you get that cutback, you yeah. get a clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right, that'll do Let's it. get some players We're on. We're going to go talk to the stars of the game. So come on back, everybody. We're going to take a break. And welcome, everyone. We're joined by the stars of tonight's game. To my right, Tyler Smith. To his right, Tracy Fudge. Kasim uh, Glover. Ty Ryan Alcott. And, of course, Shanir Schuler. Let's start with you, Tyler. You had, the, you had a huge interception there at the end of the game and was about the most patient run return I've seen. It, took, it seemed to take uh, about a minute and a half to get back down. But you read the blocks extremely well. Talk about that play. Well, I knew he was going to fade from the beginning because he yelled to his quarterback. But after I caught the pick, I got to give it all to my defense. They were just blocking their, blocking their butts off of me, so I got to give it all to them. Like Kwasim, Nat, all of them. It's all, it's all on them. Terrific. So, Tracy, talk about, talk about the game and talk about the team's explosiveness. You're a team of big plays today, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, we wanted to get out and uh, execute our plays. And we just wanted to, you know, just get out there and uh, play. And uh, we made big plays. And uh, I owe it all to uh, my line, my receivers, running backs, everybody. And Kasim, you had a big interception for a touchdown. You got the, the second score of the night. Talk about that play. Um, I was just in the right, right place in the right time. My coach told me to use uh, to stay two yards inside of the receiver and just wait for the ball and play the receiver and the quarterback. And that's what I did. And the ball ended in my hands. And a uh, good thing. I give it up to uh, Ryan for a good blocking. I got in the end zone. You did, and you waited for that block to develop. Do you, you guys are patient runners, man. When you intercept the pass, you take your time. Ryan, you had, you had a couple of big blocks, and of course, we call your name all time on defense, man. You're always there. Talk about talk about the defense today. In the first half, they controlled the ball, they controlled it most of the clock, but in the second half, you guys were just terrific. Yeah, we made some adjustments. We went in the locker room, we drawed up some plays, what they run, and we had our adjustments. D line, I got to give it up to our D line. We were just coming after him. We run stopped him. Secondary did a great job with their adjustments after that one play. We adjusted and we shut them down. So there you had uh, three three touchdowns. You ever scored three touchdowns in a game varsity before? Uh, yeah, one time. One time? <laughs> one time. So tell me about the first one. I think the first one was when you bounced off two guys. They kind of picked each other off and you just uh, motored down the end. Yeah, I didn't even know I was staying up. I had my eyes closed and I was falling. <laughs> and then when I looked up, Tyler had a good block and I just finished the run. And the second play, Tracy hit you right in stride. Guy just missed tipping it, and you caught it and uh, took it to the to the house. Yeah, me and Tracy goof around in practice all the time because I tell everybody they can't guard me, just playing around, having fun. <laughs> so when it was out there, I just looked at him, gave him the look, and he knew what was going to happen. And that number 30 started off just like last week. It started off big. First play of the game, touchdown. I mean, <laughs> I don't really know what to say, but... I mean, the good block by Kwasim and the good block by him and Scooby, and 20, number 23 Scooby, I mean, it just set it up perfectly. I couldn't do there anything There were blocks all night on these turnovers, man. You guys were just, a, like Craig said, the patience. You had a huge block on the on Smith's return. You had a huge block at the end. You had a huge fumble recovery. What did it feel like playing the first game in the brand-new stands? Are you pumped because of it? Yeah. You can't even, you can't even, like, you can't no even describe it. Like, it just touches your heart. Like, when you run through, you feel chills. Like, you get the chills. Yeah, go ahead. Tell me about it. Just excitement going through your head. I mean. It's first, first time, Ever. first game coming out here in the new stadium. I mean, I got two more years, but you know, this is my lot. This is gonna be my lot. This, they last senior night, my last time being with them. So it's just, it's excitement going through your head, and all you want to do is win for them. And Rob, we got a cool picture when we were here with the with the kickoff of the of the whole you know demolition. We got me and you yeah. and Dr. Zaga looking at the plans. It's a great pick. So you came, you were here for the demolition, yeah. and now you're here for the first game. Tell me what you feel like. Uh, I mean, I've been. It feels like I've been waiting for years. Honestly, we've been waiting. We were here every single day of practice. We just watched progress, 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 and finally, it's finally here. Not completely done. But we don't care about all the facilities. We don't care. We about don't need stuff. no stinking bathrooms. Yeah, you know, that. people can go in the outhouse. We don't care. All we need is just to come out that tunnel, because that's tradition. That's our tradition. That's the barren way. Come out that tunnel. All right, man. Thanks. There you go. So you guys got. Uh, you got St. Joe's next, right? What do we know about St. Joe's? I don't know anything yet, or that's uh, we, we start tomorrow, huh? Huh? They move Brian the wide receiver. He's probably the best athlete. So if we we stop him, we'll be pretty good, I think. All right. So you're you 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 had you had the bump. Yeah, you're on a three-game winning streak. You lost one tough one. The Colonia had a lead in the beginning, and then they they came back. And they're they're a good team. Let's face it. Uh, and now you're back on the winning ways, right? So you got you're looking forward to the rest of the season. All right. There we go. Oh, yeah, of course, man. Come on. There we go. Well, you guys, you guys are explosive, and you're fun to watch. So good luck the rest of the way, and we hope we, uh, well, we'll Thank be here you. next week. We'll Thank be here next week. Yeah. Exactly right. So good luck the rest of the way. Congratulations tonight. And we're joined by the Baron, Jonathan O'Hollick. Jonathan, talk about tonight's game. It was a great performance out there. We got a few great interceptions. We had a huge return, like, what, 90-something yards down the field? If we can play like that next week against St. Joe's and then JFK the week after that, 
we can win out. This guy's not just a Baron, he's a football he's fan. He's a very big about. football fan. How did you become the Baron? I don't know really. It just sort of was happened. It competition or was it, it, it? No, no competition. They just sort of gave it to me. Oh, really? <laughs> just, and you got a just, Baroness too. Yeah, I got a Baron everybody, and then I'd get out in halftime, go up in the thing, almost kill myself a few times, but you know. You know, that, that's just what happens. You know? So what do you think about the new stand? Oh, man, I can't believe it. This this high, thing's huh? been going on for, oh, yeah, everybody looks like an ant down here on the track going all the way up, you know? it's We've been watching it go all year long, and we're finally done with three weeks left, and then we'll have it all for year next year. Yep, for me. all right, cool. That's good. And, you know, the Barons have some tradition. Russell Fisher ended up on Broadway. Russell who? Oh, Russell yeah, Fisher. Russell Fisher, yes. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that's, who I, that's who I thought, yes. Are you an actor? Are you a thespian? <laughs> I'm not really an actor, but well, maybe sometime. Right. I'd rather be a sports broadcaster. Oh, maybe really? I'll, hey, I'll, I'll be doing what you're doing you. if you thanks, thanks, yeah. for okay. <laughs> thanks for stopping. Thanks for stopping. Forget that. We're going to delete that. <laughs> now, now we're kidding. Congratulations. Right. Really. Good job. And All that right, will do it. Thanks. thanks for Thank stopping. You. Good luck the rest of the way. We'll, we'll, go Barons. We'll, we'll get you up. All right. There we go. So that will do it. A lot of fun here tonight. Huh? What a good, so just a good bunch of kids. Yeah. I mean, we've seen Zanier now for many years. Uh, you know, Smith's new, Fudge is new. Uh, Dachau, we've said up there, we knew, we've known since like the fifth grade or fourth grade. Yeah. Uh, Lanier is kind of new to us. Yeah, I don't and know who's Tyler the last Smith. guy? Tyler yeah. Smith. I don't know him much. Either. Yeah, I don't remember seeing him too much. But I mean, they're just nice kids. They get on here and they just start talking, and it's just it's just good to hear from them. And, and the, the way they, the poise they have is what I'm right. trying to say is just amazing. And the Baron was a good sport too. Baron was cool. <laughs> yeah, but he's not going to be a high school sports announcer. Not, <laughs> not, not as long as you and I are here. Exactly right. So that will do it. Explosive night for Woodbridge. Great night. Fan stands are open. The place looks great. People were electric and uh, terrific night all in all. You know, kudos to everybody. Kudos to the players. Uh, kudos to the principal, the coaches, um, Chris Costing and the crew to put these stands together. Carol Orlick we ran the project to the uh, redevelopment agency. Everybody worked hard in this. We were trying to get at least a couple of games in, and we managed to do that. I'm so psyched that there was a Friday night home game here under the lights with the new stands. That's right, and we'll be back next week for the homecoming game. So from Woodbridge High School, on behalf of the crew, once again, the final score, Woodbridge 42 and South Plainfield 7. For John McCormick, Craig Coughlin saying thanks for watching, everybody. Good night.